All right, gamers, we are back for another game of Draven the Diamond. This game playing Draven Bard into Lucian Workon. Looks like this invade won't lead to much. Head over to the blue buff here then. Should be an okay matchup. If I can predict when... Oh, it says he disconnected while he's leaving base. Something feels off there. Yeah, but if I can predict when the Rakan is going to use W, then I can cancel that pretty easily with my E. The key to cancelling Rakan W, though, is that you need to cancel it while it's still, like, mid-travel. If you CC him while he's already reached his destination and is starting to knock up, uh, you can still CC him to the side, obviously, but you are not actually going to cancel the W. You can cancel the W only if you do it while he's dashing. So that basically needs to be a prediction. Rather than a reaction. There's no way you can react in time to cancel the dash, only the knockup, which you can't cancel, so you can't. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna get started on pushing. We don't need to focus too heavily on training, we can just push here. We're going to outpush Lucian just by virtue of having much stronger auto attacks. Okay, close enough. Huge mistake from Rakan to go on Bard. I'm going to exhaust Lucian. Cancel the next, my bad. Or drop the next. What? Why did Mato cancel there? Okay, that's a kill. No! Oh, oh well. We'll just play it safe with that flash. I don't know if he had the damage to one shot me, but. Alright, we got the cash out. God bless. It's a shame I missed out on the first blood gold, but it's not that big a deal. Shouldn't need to bother with these heals. I can save them in case I'm getting ganked by Briar or something. I need a quick getaway. Hmm. I'm not sure Briar was going to lose that. She gets a lot of healing like Warwick, doesn't she? Crap, what were we building? Oh, yeah, Vamps up there. It's been about a month since my last Draven to Diamond video. Yeah, the build we were doing was Vamp Scepter into Triforce into Ravenous Hydra. That build felt amazing. So gives a lot of damage while also providing a lot of survivability. And also having enough CDR to keep axes up permanently even without minions. Oh, does he want... No, I don't feel confident enough to do that into a big wave. If he wants to portal us through to fight them, then no. I gotta be careful I don't get hit by Rakan W here though. Just gotta respect the fact that they got a slow push. To go, to see. Got asses. Need yeah, that was a basically all just a huge mistake from Rakan. And that, what was it, level 2 fight? Yeah. To go on the bard there. He absolutely can only go on me. Anytime he goes on bard, if I'm in range to be hitting people, then I'm going to absolutely turn that trade in our team's favor every single time. Even if bard misses everything and Rakan hits everything, there's just no trading Draven. You need to CC me, so I can't be auto-attacking for at least that period where I'm knocked up. And also try and burst me down so I can't fight back or I'm going to die, you know? The moment you use cooldowns on the Bard, and the Lucian made that mistake as well to follow up on the Rakan. Then you're just giving me free reign to stomp the fight. Ooh, hello. Careful Bard. I'm gonna place a ward here. Hopefully they don't have the pink, because it would be risky to clear that. 
Okay, it's not a freeze. Okay, they're not really gonna fight here though. Oh, Lucian has no mana, by the way. Which means he's my bitch. You got the cannon, but at what cost? If I see that he's got no mana, then I have no reason to be letting him farm there. Usually because he's got the big wave, I've got to be respectful, but... I'm going to have to back off here, because I'm assuming his teammates are around, and that's why I got pinged. Yeah. Good ping, because I wouldn't have noticed that. Didn't see her on the map. We still just try and maintain the freeze here, because Lucian is still in a shitty spot. He can only really, like, cope here and actually fix this wave instead of his jungler, or at least his support. But ideally, both his jungler and his support are holding his hand. Just focusing on thinning this out, because it doesn't need to be this big for a freeze. And ideally, you want to clear out the melees during a freeze anyway, so that they don't walk under turret and ruin the wave state. I can do with basing soonish. Because I do have a lot of gold at this point. So I'm just going to start turning this freeze into a slow push instead. Man, Took forever to <laughs> for that axe to bounce back. <laughs> With the slow push, we're still denying some farm from Lucian, and at the same time, we're also building up a massive wave, which makes it even harder for them to fight us than it usually would be. Also, slightly protect protects us from Briar. If she tries to gank us during a big wave, there's a chance we could turn it around on her. Alright, I'm just gonna focus on crashing this now. And we base. Or do we? God damn it. Okay, I've got my axes. Come on. Nah, come on. Dude, I'm so close. Got her. That's a huge cash out. I should be focusing Lucian if I can. Okay, I got him. I got a level up, which probably saved my life here. Fucking hell, that was a close one. Super lucky, honestly. I think I think I did actually manage to hit Lucian with my axe, but I felt I felt like I misclicked on Rakan on the very first auto. Oh, am I getting ganked here? Okay, we'll disregard the wave state. This was a big shutdown to hand over. Usually, so if I were to give over like three hundred gold for, in exchange for shoving shoving in that wave and preventing a freeze, I'd be like, you know what? Probably worth it. Might be worth it. I'll I'll do it. But if I'm handing over set or how much gold would that be? Yeah, 750. Just for fixing wave state? Eh. Probably not really worth it. As much as I hate to leave the wave in a bad state. I really want to preserve the shutdown at all costs. Okay, that was from it and it missed. Oh, didn't need to take this. Alright, he escapes. Didn't feel there was any need to move over there because he was going to die or live regardless of me. Anyway, I basically got a quadruple there when you account for my passive gold. Except the great thing about driven passive is that it doesn't actually count for bounties. So, if... oh, hang on. Ooh, Bardi, did not need to do that. Oh, come on. 
There's no way. Holy crap. Alright, get me out of here. Briar doesn't have ult, but she could walk on me. Ooh, these fights are just not even close, honestly. I had HP to spare. Okay, this is gonna give me the most amount of AD. If I go for Caulfield's Hammer, then I can't afford the pickaxe, so I just leave it at that. But if I go for a Tiamath, I still get the same amount of AD from Tiamath as I do from Caulfield's, but I also get an extra longsword on top, so 35 AD versus 25. Easy. Oh my lord, maybe I should ult there. Lucian is there anyway, so... I'm gonna throw it there. So I should be shoving anyway, is what I meant to say. Ah, oh, cross they moved back at that point. Oh, well. I can maybe still get them with ult though, so my ult is gonna be coming back now. I'm trying to direct it so it goes through the turret here. Ah, oh, but they're not even there though. Oh well, and I'm missing that anyway. It went like through here. Whatever. I don't have too much experience trying to direct Draven ult across the map on the return. I guess to get it to go here, I maybe needed to go like here. Oops. Need two axes. What? How was I still under turret there? Come on. Not even close again. Hmm. Even with the misplays. We're still- ooh! No, you're kidding me! Oh, thank you, Shen. Oh, I tried to walk up there to place a ward, but I didn't have one. Didn't expect that dash range anyway. <clears throat> I might have just arrived anyway because I'm tankier than she expects for my trophy for us. Can't tell exactly how big that shun shield was. Uh, to be honest, I mean, it is lethality, bro. Surely I would have died, surely. Would be so nice to intentionally get hit by that in my base. <laughs> I don't think it went to our base though. Um, what do we want to do here? I think collector should be more than fine. Won't bother building boots at the moment. I got enough attack speed, more than enough between lethal tempo and Triforce. It's one of the great things I like about Triforce is it kind of removes the needs for boots, at least berserkers anyway. It gives me a lot of in combat movement speed as well. Out of combat, I'm kind of slow, but. Oh, my bad. What the hell? Got her. Slowly pressuring them while keeping my eye on the map. Just need to knock back Lucian in there just to cancel his DPS. Oh god. Ah, dropped all my axes, my bad. Maybe he could have just gone for Kalan Rakan there. He probably didn't expect my lethal tempo range. Anyway, I have a good life steal, so look how rapidly we heal up here. Ah. 
This one does some damage. And I can base for... Oh, God. Keep dropping maxes. At this point, I just have to fight her. I can't run, so... No! Super close. Perfect axe catching would have won me that fight. Oh, well. Okay, so if I were to buy Merc Treads here, it would make me beefier against the Gwen and the Victor. Reduce the stun on the Gwen. Sorry, the Briar, sorry. And also reduce the damage Rakan deals to me, which is not a lot, but it's not non-existent. And also reduce the duration of the Rakan charm. But also reduce the duration of Victor W. I think I'll go for that. But the, actually, I don't need to build that though. I can keep on building AD until I can afford Merc Treads. I think Berserkers would just be overkill, especially because I might build Farkinen later on, which also gives attack speed. Using my W there just to park lethal down. Oh, sorry, uh, Triforce, because I <laughs> didn't think I could kill it without it. Hmm. Kind of a waste of the Herald's HP there. Oh my god, that almost hit me. Jeez. Where the hell? She must have flashed. Or maybe dashed. Got her. Jeez. Let's get the red buff and go back to pushing, I guess. Hmm, no, I can't really push. But anyway, they've surrendered, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> GG. Alright, gamers, we are back for another game driven to diamond where i just had to blow my flash because of the invade maybe look by now i should pop my potion actually i'm not stuck on the opposite side of my team that sucks can't really chase into them oh boy okay at least i don't have to recall i guess all right this game i'm gonna be playing draven Rakan. Into misfortune, karma. How can we lose? Well, because we're fighting without me. Obviously. I feel like the answer should be fairly obvious. It's not a mystery. It was an unfavorable fight. Well, this just blows. Still got hit anyway. I may as well have tanked it, and then I don't have to miss XP. I have to potentially tank another Q, just getting into range of the minions. Okay, this could be good. Nice one. Okay, pretty solid. <clears throat> Turned over, getting hit by Q there. We're still definitely going to be missing out on level 2. Remember, I also missed that XP from one of the melees, so... Even if we were to match them in the push, somehow, miraculously, I still wouldn't hit level 2. Oh, I don't know about using W to cancel bases there. Walking up to auto and then Wing away would have been a much better call there, I think. Alright, I can only really slow push two waves here, I think. Since I'm quite low, so is Rakan. If Misfortune gets into lane here with full HP, full mana, and the extra items... Then there's a decent chance she zones us off the wave. We want to focus on crashing faster. But couldn't crash that wave. We don't have the wave for that, so... We crash this one instead. And the faster we kill these minions, even if she shows up now, if she has zero minions, yeah, I would expect that we just win this fight, hopefully. 
She won't even test it. Cool. So she's gonna have a long sword over me on this particular base, and when she gets like that entire wave, <laughs> I'm sure that's probably just but another long sword for her as well. Anyway, I'm testing a different app for instant replays this game rather than replay HD. I wanna check. Oh, is that a replay? That's not a replay. We might have to play without replays this game then. I was expecting this keybind to just be Control Shift A to create an instant replay. What? I thought it was okay, whatever. Okay, that sucks. It just cost me at least one CS there. Let's admire me for a bit. Oh yeah. I have to create a replay and then have a different binding for watching the replay? That's kind of inconvenient. I mean, I can't believe Misfortune is basing already. The most she could have based for, surely, is just one longsword. Maybe Serrated Dirk, I guess, but... Ow. Got enough minions there that I'm not worried about to keep bouncing on me. She's a bit overextended there. Doesn't matter if her con can't land the engage, though. Oop. Oh, nice one. Okay, huge. Good juke. Nice, and we managed to mostly catch all those axes. Perfect. Okay, that should probably put us back in the lead, I hope. Do with that the uh, notification disappearing. Need to maybe mess around with those settings a bit. No following these footsteps. Hmm. Gotta say, replay HD feels a bit more. Intuitive. Only thing I don't like about replay HD is just the fact that it just freezes so goddamn much. It can take so long to get the replay on the screen sometimes. <clears throat> Watch and learn. Okay, so here we can mount up another slow push. Won't end up being so slow if these melees go under turret. Which is out of my control. One of them did. Still decent though. Doesn't get better than this. The next wave that shows up, we have to crash that 100%. This might even be too fast, I'm not sure. Maybe I fucked up by hitting a full HP minion there. One needed to reset my axes. Nah, this is fine. Oh, what did Misfortune even base for before, by the way? Because she didn't guess right at Dirk. Oh my god. Is freezing a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit risky to push here, but if we get Rakan placing a ward, that's fine. We just stomp her an extended trade, so she should not be thinking this. Oh, I just barely didn't get her. That's sad. Oh well. Do with shoving this wave, and then I can also get the plating, and then I can base. I think I'm gonna have to close this up, actually. It's giving me FPS drops that I never usually get. Oh, we're getting ganked. 
Because I really want to get this plating first. Very nice. Um, I don't really need this refillable, to be honest, if I have Vamps up there anyway, so I'll just sell that and get a Longsword instead. The Longsword is going to convert into quite a bit of kill potential for us, I think, on Draven, so we don't want to miss out on that. Misfortune missing again. Once again, time to mount up a slow push. It's just awkward slow pushing on Draven though when you don't have enough CDR to keep your axes up permanently. Because eventually you do have to auto attack a minion a bit early. Like here, actually, I think this is gonna be exactly one of those... Um, Waves that just ends up pushing a little bit too fast. So I'm just going to go ahead and crash it. So I don't end up in an awkward spot. By guaranteeing that we crash, uh, it, it ensures the wave state resets and doesn't end up with just us pushed way too close to their turret to vulnerable to a gank. Do I want to ult there? I don't think I do because it would remove a lot of my kill potential onto Misfortune here. I haven't had a kill in a while, by the way, so I've got decent, uh, decent text you can melt him at the moment. Ow, that's fine, I got life steal. <laughs> Probably wasn't worth it, though, to be fair. Fair enough. I respect it. Would have been a lot more worth if I actually stood in the ultimate for a bit longer, but... Come on. No, come on, I misclicked. Nah, I'm trolling, my bad. Holy shit, I can't believe it though. Fucking exhaust as well, man. Ugh, oh well. That is embarrassing. Did I have cleanse up? No, I think it was at least when a moon was shut up, I had like 30 seconds on that. My cleanse might have still been down there, so I wouldn't have been able to remove the exhaust. Would have been worth it to do that though, because mistake or no mistakes, like Karma was 100% dead there if I didn't get exhausted. Which is the really annoying thing about her play is that it was a straight up bad play, but it works out only because I misplay as well. And try and choose misfortune here, maybe. Oh, she's probably gonna go do Drake, I guess. We'll just leave this pushing towards us as a freeze. Yeah, they're doing Drake 100%. She misses out on the way for that, though, which is pretty good for me. Where's Rakan, by the way? I haven't gone a while. Fuck me, that reaches, of course, it does. Hmm. But unfortunate that I'm left 1v2 all of a sudden. Okay, he's coming back. Thankfully, I have life still to try and make up for the HP I've lost. No, I just missed. My 
Rad. Gotta leave. Drop my axes, this sucks. path a long way around here otherwise Corky can jump on me and kill me. Ooh, I almost killed my teammates too. How long is this though? <laughs> okay. Dude, I literally just want my Triforce but this Corky refuses to stop laning here. I just have to let my team do their thing here. I can't really get closer without probably dying. Nice one, team. Most I can do is stand like in the area to try and bait. Okay, we're slowly life stealing up. Got the axes again. Oh, oh, hello! What the hell? Fucking no, of course. My bad. I got the trappers at least. Hmm. An absolute disaster, though, that I didn't kill Karma before. I would have been in a much better spot right now if I had... Oh, this is a crit misfortune. Weird. Perfection. I got that. Yeah, I had like 165 stacks at one point, now I'm on 23 without cashing it out. It's a lot of gold missed out on. Would have got about a 400 gold from that, I think. Not exactly sure about the exact amount. Didn't just cost myself 70, 70 mana for that CS, but also cost myself the mana of using another Q to replace the one I just lost. Okay, Miss Fortune is roaming for whatever reason. We're gonna try and shut this in to make her miss farm. She's still mid. And Corky's also like up, so we know nobody is actually bot lane here. I'll use W just to get a draw first proc and also get more turret damage. Where did Miss Fortune go? Is she coming bot now? She should be. If I ever actually need my W to escape or something, I can always just get the reset with an X. Still not quite at the stage of one-shotting casters unless I use the Triforce proc on them. Occasionally I'm just pressing W just to get that Triforce proc if I think it's going to be uh, efficient for clearing the way faster. Nice. Did I just want a base here? I think I do. Drake is coming up in 20. I want to spend my gold. Okay, it wasn't his flash though. Mundo flashed. I don't know why though. I have cleanse. Oh, come on. Yeah, I got one kill. Oof, big shutdown as well. Okay, Corky, no flash. I can maybe try and dive Corky here. There's no way. Or this W just escapes. He took a lot more damage from that than I did though when you consider how much I life still after and how much he doesn't. Okay, I think I'm now one shot in casters. <laughs> yeah, by 2 HP. 
Okay, that is probably going to be Corky tipping here. Yep. He, I might just be that if he's just going straight for me. Oh my god, that's an illegal slow. Yeah, I needed Bart to re react to the fact that this was the obvious play he was going to make. The moment he started his TP with his package, there was just no kind of play for me. Even if I read the play correctly. The only kind of play was in Briar coming to defend me. I mean, I guess I could have, like, tried to... Or, I done a better job dodging his package. I was trying to. I feel like I almost shouldn't have been knocked aside, but I, clearly I must have been hit by it. And that did so much damage, which also set up the slow, which also set up just very free skill shots for Corky, which usually I would have a much better chance of dodging. If I just dodged the passive... It would have gotten a lot better. That was my counterplay, I guess. Mechanically, I could have played it slightly better. It's just the decisions that I could take there, you know, nothing would save me. Only mechanical I'll play would. Oh, I could have cleansed the slow, actually. But that would be a risk, though, because I'm not guaranteed to have it pay off. I maybe could have killed Hammer there, I'm not sure. Okay, they're pushing bot turret, I can't really defend that. I'm just gonna go for mid turret. They're, they should have recalled by now, so they're going to be defending that. So the most I can do here is just go for camps. Ooh, and Redbuff is up. What the hell? Who is here? Drop the next. I'm fine. The, what the hell is that, Duke? I got my R coming back. When is it? There we go. It killed Misfortune. Got um, what a play. I can still lifesteal, I don't need to leave. Corky was pretty low as well. <laughs> one for one on top lane. Yeah, we are running cleanse this game, by the way, I forgot to mention. If they had Exhaust, then Cleanse is really good for Exhaust, particularly on Draven, because it's really useful to Exhaust Draven, so it's really useful, therefore, to remove the Exhaust as Draven. Uh, good for the Karma route, and pretty mandatory against the Mumu, I would say, as Draven in teamfights, since we're fairly short-ranged. <coughs> if we're auto-attacking in teamfights, it definitely if we're auto-attacking a Mumu at least, then it's a pretty decent chance we're in his ult range, so being able to remove that is very good as well. Oh, and also it would be useful for the hammer. Already got to use my cleanse to get a kill against the hammer once. Alright, I'm very close to having Collector. I would very much like that. I don't have to care too much about this book, I don't think. Maybe the big ones, I guess, do decent damage, but the rest I just life still too easily. Yeah, full HP even after getting like four rockets. my ultimate there. Oh wow, that just barely didn't get me an assist. You're kidding. Something my Ravenous Hydra would kill Corky there. Or at least give me the assist. You're kidding me. He actually lives. Boss can over, but the fight is already over at this point. Hello. I gotta be careful not to get stunned here. Oh boy. Got him. That's worth it for the shutdown. Oh, man. Super dead here. Where am I? Oh my god, these shields are just perfectly timed. I didn't notice that. Fuck, my bad. I would have walked away. Every time is about to die, man. Just a random shield. Oh well. It was a fairly decent fight overall. I got a lot of kills there. A shutdown. 
We've gone from having only like 240 gold from our passive to having 900. We're in a good spot now. Okay, Zanya's on the hammer as well, was also making tankier than he seemed. That's something that's actually like somewhat annoying, I've always found this annoying in League of Legends, is just the fact that when somebody has a lot of HP, when they're tanky through HP, that is like visually represented by having a, a large HP bar, right? Like you see how many bars they have in their HP, like how many lines, and you say, oh, this guy's tanky. But if I look at the Mumu, or anybody squishy, hang on. If I look at Quirky right now, I have no idea how much armor he has. I can see how tanky he is through HP, but I have no idea how tanky his armor is making him. I can't tell that just by looking at him. I have to click on him, which I can't do in the heat of combat and to make a split second decision. Let's admire me for a bit. It's just something that's always irked me about League of Legends. I don't think there's much of a solution though. Somebody needs to defend against this. Okay. No Not bad. I had a feeling he might try that because he was just trying really hard to stay near me. Which would make the most sense if uh, his flash was up. Oh, hello. I thought Hammer was the one I would most likely have to help kill. Oh. Got him. We should be able to do Baron here. Oh, I thought I saw a ward there. Had triple axes until that. Oh, wow, no way. Why did the misfortune drop in here? <laughs> they stole the Baron, that's the best outcome they could hope for. <laughs> one. I'll steal the raptors while Celis gets the mid farm. That way we're not stepping on each other's toes. There we go. Oh, dude, I wasn't paying attention. I was so focused on catching axes, man. I swear, Draven players just have the worst map war on us just for the sake, just because they have to constantly fucking look at the ground. See exactly where their axes are landing. There's just... N I can't be confident that Karma doesn't just walk up behind them and shield them and turn that fight around against me, so I'm just gonna recall. I don't see any need to sell my Doran's Blade yet. Maybe if I could get another Vamps up there. I don't, I don't need to be costing Q yet either. I guess now it's fine. Yeah. Remember as well, by the way, that I'm not only trying to preserve my passive stacks when those are up, but also my Revenant Hydra stacks. I'm getting a lot of AD from this. How much AD do we get total at the moment? 20? Plus 65, 85. It's crazy how much they nerfed that actually. This misfortune should be that here. She's gonna try and recall, but I got my ultimate to cancel. So we'll just do that really quickly. Boom. Now she's gonna know where to run. <laughs> nice try. Are they pushing mid? We may need to recall for that. We don't need our whole team here. What the hell? 
ignore that. Hmm, I'll do zeal. And we'll just get berserkers now, just for the sake of getting something. Spawning very soon. Oh, kidding. Hmm, okay. Corky's gonna have his package for this Drake. Realistically, I don't think we can actually contest this, not unless we can uh, force the Corky package defensively. Okay. Or offensively. Okay, we should be able to contest it now. I just need to wait for this to run out. There we go. Oh. We should be able to clean up at least. I should have just tanked it and walked up the hunt killed to be honest. Can we push this? It's only a Mumu alive right now. I don't have to be afraid. First person to spawn will be Heimerdinger. I'm not particularly afraid of him either. Remember, I got clans as well, in case he manages to stun me under turret there. Oh wow, his burst is really high. <laughs> not bad. We're just testing. Limit testing. Now, I thought I could just cleanse the stun and just one-shot him there, but he one-shot me a lot faster. That's a lesson learned. Do not run into Heimerdinger. Hm. Even Aziz did a lot of damage there. What is his build? He's got a early-ish Rabadons, I guess. I think that's normal for Heimer, though, because um, most champions who just want like to build damage would usually not bother with the Rabadons just because it's so expensive. But a champion like Heimer actually values just the raw AP a lot. Not just for damage, but also because it increases the tankiness of his turrets. Which you can't do by buying like Magic Pen or anything like that. So he typically does get quite an early Rabadons compared to other champions. Uh, completely wrong elixir there, which I can't undo, but I will. <laughs> My bad. Guess we're gonna have some mana regen. What is this red buff despawn? Very, very soon. Let me get that. I may just end up selling my fire cannon for bloodthirster as well. Will definitely give me more dueling power. But at the same time, it's super nice for Corky for that reason. I can only land an auto on him there because of fire cannon. Although you can poke melees with fire cannon as well, it is just definitely by far the most effective against range champions. Against melees, you just brought up bloodthirster, I would say. Oh, nice one. I said we just do Baron. I guess that's Corky tipping back there. Or it might be Heimer. Yeah, it's Heimer. This time we don't tank them. I need to kill this before I can potentially even fight Corky. No, wait, Briar. Just completely ignores the fight. Never mind. Damn, with Red Elixir, they might have gone a lot better. I should have made a big mistake though, just trying to ignore the turret initially. I figured, okay, Harmer's dead. I'll just tank the turret, can't be that much damage. It was a lot of damage. I should have killed the turret first and then advanced onto Corky. My bad. Armor being alive or dead has no burn on how much damage this turret steal. Hmm. 
Ooh, actually, what I could do... Mm, what I would like to do is just sell boots for Bloodthirster instead to have 100% crit with this build, but there's no way I have enough movement speed if I do that. Well, 360... Okay, I can't do it yet for sure, but... Maybe eventually. I'll just sell Fire Cannon for Bloodthirster now, then eventually we can sell Berserkers for our Fire Cannon. I'll also get um, three extra movement speed. Yeah, three extra movement speed from Front Force. We're getting an extra legendary item. Oh, hello. Oh, wow. Really, I don't one shot that. That's why Drabadons is so good on him. Fuck me. <clears throat> Fuck that strike soul if they get it, which they do. Oh. Nice one. Oh, I lost vision! No! If I just killed my fortune instantly, that would have been so much cleaner. Fuck. Look how much damage she did. Aside from the R, I think the rest of it was avoidable if I just autoed her. But I immediately lost vision the moment I entered the brush, or was approaching the brush, which is so unfortunate. I got bitted so hard by initially having vision for no reason. Because I could have just blue trinketed it, but I was not expecting to randomly lose it. That's was looking like GG, unfortunately. I don't think we played well enough as a team, because I think we should have been winning fights, for sure. Oh well, GG. Alright gamers, we are back for another game of Draven to Diamond. This game playing Draven Ash into Ezreal. <coughs> Seraphine, sorry, I turned into Corpse Husband for a second there. I've got pain to serve. Decided to run Exhaust. Unfortunately, I hadn't, this is actually my fault that we're running double Exhaust. I switched at the last second, didn't notice Ash already had Exhaust. But I decided to run that because we're going to be facing... Turns out Assassin Shaco, which is what I was thinking it might be. Uh, as well as the Zed. So we may want Exhaust to just minimize their burst so we can do our damage. It's not terribly good for lane, otherwise I would have run Cleanse for the Seraphine. Getting horribly outranged right now. The Sash is just not even playing the lane, actually. Okay, but we're actually winning this fight, though. Ah, misclick, though. Damn it. If I had actually hit Ezreal with that axe, as I intended to... Oh, fuck me, Ash. Then I would have been able to flash into the brush, place a ward, and finish him off. Oh, well. So, uh, Ezreal flash down... Seraphine no ex no Ezreal yeah Seraphine no exhaust and Ezreal no heal. Unfortunately, I don't have a window to go in now because I'll just die if I flash in. He would need to be one hit away from death, not two. Fuck. I still has her exhaust though. Okay. No, you're kidding me. That actually killed. Okay, so she dies and I think Ezreal dies as well. Okay, not bad, not bad. Leave that wave. Plus, no, she needs to shove it in. Oh, uh, never mind. She's dead. <laughs> never mind. Is he gonna fix that wave state for us? He is starting. I bet you Ezreal is just spamping him back like crazy right now. Check is like, but I want the wave. But then he decides to listen to his ADC because he doesn't want his ADC to rage quit. I thought I'd say you got your jungler to listen to you. You threatened to rage quit. It's not toxic because you're not actually going to rage quit. You're just pretending like you're toxic, you know? To get your jungler to listen to the right decision. Oh, hello. I'm back in lane. 
Didn't we suddenly kill him with at least? <coughs> Yeah, it would have been pretty worth it now for the fact that Chico ganked after as well. Instead, the wave that ends up fucked for me when Ash could have, um... Shipped that in. Actually, oh, did they not even get assists? Well, not off of her, I guess. Oh, we're definitely getting ganked here. Fuck. There goes my potential kill. I didn't play that perfect for sure, but that was nice enough, I guess. I had two wards actually, so I could have focused more on cutting instead of trying to stand in the brush. It's gonna base. I even though I have life still, I don't have the HP to actually survive if I walk up to the wave for life still, which means I can't actually sustain there. I'm gonna leave the base with uh, quite a bit of HP missing though, because under turret I should hopefully be able to farm just fine. And life still off of my vamps up there. I've also got refillable if I need it. Okay. Definitely missing out on that HP. Just got me a little bit more XP, I guess. Not too many lost sets. A little bit unlucky there, HP bars. But we're not taking damage, and we're life stealing, so we go back to full HP, more or less. Seems to be blood everywhere I go. Actually, I took just my pathing manually there, uh, using a click on the ground to make sure that I was pathing optimally. It's something that I have been thinking recently I should do more often. I don't know why just clicking on the enemy champion isn't just the fastest pathing towards them, but I. I guess it's because uh, that path thing is like not counting for minion block. Whereas if I set my pathing manually, then it does. Potentially might get ganked by Zed soon. Okay, there he is. Man, they play really afraid in a 2v1. I think we just keep this freeze going. We can see if we can maybe... Um or central to extend off that, or with how low he is, maybe he can just already base here. Yeah, I think I'll uh, freeze for now to maximize the amount of CS that... Uh, I keep forgetting that I don't have enough CDR to maintain access infinitely right now. Uh, I think we freeze right now to maintain... Uh, well, to make him miss as much CS as possible. And then, when he's entering back in the lane, we start a slow push. Use that slow push to leverage into a fast base. I'll take that. And then I'll have, I'll have a lot of gold by then, more than I have now. I need to start thinning this out faster if I want to slow push. If this is still frozen by the time they get into lane, then they get to crash, which I want to avoid. Here we go. Wave is officially thinned out now that I clear this minion. So push as slowly as possible. Next wave is going to be a cannon wave, so hopefully I should be able to maintain the slow push there. <coughs> Need to avoid doing as much damage to the minions as possible, though. Yep, yeah, this one is pretty easy. Kind of waves are super easy to maintain a slow push on. Would have pushed way harder if it was a regular wave. Now we look to crash this because this is 100% going to be... Like, it's already pretty pushed as it is. And it's definitely going to... At the very least, get to their turret on the next 
Uh, wave. There we go. Hopefully I can get this base off without missing much farm, but the, at least the Seraphine is really good wave clear. Oof, nice reaction time. Oh, they both exhausted Zed, how unfortunate. At more or less the same time as well. Damn. Places to go, me to see. I need to be very careful here, actually. Yeah, Surfing Ult could have screwed me. I wasn't really... I hadn't really noticed that she was level 6 there. You need to use W to proc my machine if I want to watch out those casters. Are they actually basing? Just in case they are, I'm going to start pushing. It's just a new trick whenever you're using Triforce or Essence Reaver Draven. Just press W right before a lost hits if you know you need that extra sheen damage to actually get the lost hit on the minion. If you know the damage wall, then it just massively speeds up your wave clear. You get the reset on your W immediately after catching an X anyway, so it's not like wasting cooldowns, it's just wasting mana at worst. Oh, I don't have mana. Now I do. Oh. Did I get my passive first? Okay, I did. Thank god. Damn, that was super close to not even needing to die there. Just uh, the fact that I had to wait like five mana for my ultimate just gave Seraphine enough time to risk me down right before she died. Oh well, still super worth it though with the huge shutdown. Well, not shutdown, but cash out that I got for my passive. Okay, let's see what happens if I perma push. It's easier to deny CS to Ezreal by pushing him under turret than it is by zoning him anyway, since he can farm so safely from a distance. Okay, that's one planning. Shake was here. Close one. I missed clicking, but I will. Whoa. I have to keep dodging skill shots. Oh well. Hello. Hit the right one. Oh, god damn it. Fuck. Okay, we did a lot of AoE damage to him, though. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. Could have been worse. He had to flash on me for that as well, didn't he? Don't know if he used heal or not. Ah, the Shaker Clone dying was so unfortunate. An enemy has been slain. Mm, as far as I can tell, Shaco didn't get healed. Oh, nice one, TF. Put my wave go, though. Do 
too late for me to go there. Did not think he would just eat that. Does he not a bee or what? Or thought that he did. Fuck. Hmm, he actually tried to juke. Ah, and I misclicked the wall. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, you're kidding. <laughs> oh well. Used everything for that. I was hoping he at least wouldn't have ult, but nah, why wouldn't he though? Jeff was ganking bots that was alone in the lane for a while. He wouldn't have had anybody to ult on. Oh, nice one. Can go bot, get this big ass wave. Smooth. Hmm. Wait, what? No way he lives. What the fuck? Am I just so used to seeing AP Shaco that I expected a lot more damage from that? Oh, the start is down. I didn't necessarily have to push so hard there. Because I would like to shove another wave. I'd rather do it when it's not massively overextended, right? But I prefer to push slower so the wave meets um, somewhere like back here. Probably want a base. I've already got enough for a Ravenous Hydra. Looks like Zed isn't chasing, so should be good to do that. And we'll probably just want hobbies this game. Let's admire me. It's gonna be nice for the Zed, nice for the Shaco. Well, really good, as good against the Zed, especially super good against the Shaco, and useful against the Edril as well. Even useful against the Lawi, if she ever manages to get on me. Nice. That... Could have been more damage. I was expecting more damage. I just got some farm though. I love to do that really easily. That's fine. Oh, I didn't expect two Qs though. My bad. Now this I need to left still fast before his W comes back up. Nice. And now we're full HP again. Okay, the enemies are on Drake, we know they're bot side then. Places to go, me to see. Okay, I'm going to puff mid now. If Zed takes ball into it, then hopefully we're at least trading through it. Because that is here, never mind.
Don't even know if that's the real Shaco. Probably not. Oh, got hit by that, my bad. Oof. Hello, Ezreal. I'll exhaust him. Nice one. Shut down. Let's go. We'll play TF. Badly played as well. How, how big was the shutdown? Not even that big. Just 150. Be able to get a threat, I hope. Got him. Could have done with hitting the E, but it was a bit fast. <laughs> Between 50s and Yomas. Uh, I would not be. Well, personally, I can't really join there, is the issue. I am leaving. <coughs> I'll look this way before I go, though. Missed the cannon, sadly, but oh well. Oh, so I can actually do the recast during my recall. Cool. Hey, literally, the only person that um, or Dominic would be better against is Zalawi, and I haven't really interacted with her yet, so decent chance I will do better with Collector here than with Lord Dominic's. Just pointed out that I have that I hopefully don't have to interact with Alawi, and here she is just death falling down mid. This is a split pusher, by the way. She has hole breaker. I literally have very, I had a very great reason to assume I would not have to deal with Alawi at all. Gotta be very careful not to overextend. Could do Drake, yeah, probably should. Is that his pushing top meanwhile? Like, how is it that the guy with the split push item is not the one split pushing? Doesn't even make sense. Shaco might be in the pit by now. Or not. Oh, hello. Come on. Okay, I got a kill at least. Probably didn't get too much from my passive there, I imagine. Okay, now we get Lost Whisper. To be honest, I'm thinking, like, do I really even want Collector Throat Adam if I didn't even build this Raider Dirk early? Even, like, sure, it's probably, like, the best Throat Adam Power Spike, but it's not, like, it's not going to be for much longer compared to when you're building it first or second item. So even if the, it's the best Throat Adam Power Spike, if I just do Lord Dominic's instead and then do Bloodthirster, that is going to be so much better at four items than doing Collector into Lord Dominic's. 
Instead, doing Lord Dominic's into Bloodthirster, you're weaker a little bit, a third item, arguably, depending, uh, obviously not from Haney Lawi, but against everybody else, it would be weaker. But then I have Lord Dominic's and Bloodthirster, so I'm still doing a lot of damage, but also, like, really beefy from all that lifesteal. So maybe I should just switch to Lord Dominic's third item with this build. Nice. That was satisfying, though. Israel? Why is he trying to flank Ash? <gasps> that was meant to be cute. There we go. This clone fuck off, man. Nice. Misclick that one. That was attack move. That's fine. I love I love still if I have minions to attack. Slowly but surely. What is she doing? We should just kill her. Nice one. Go. Nice one. Oh, God. No! <laughs> oh, cool. Well, that was a close one. I'm pretty sure I'm getting a lot of collector executes, though. <laughs> like, as I was talking about. Whether I should even build it or not. I'm pretty sure it just gave me far more value than any other item would have. I'm pretty sure all of my kills were, were gonna be, like, leaving them on 5% HP except for collector. There was barely any overkill there. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna do Bloodthirster now. Instead of Fire Cannon, and then later on we would sell Collector for Fire Cannon. Perfection. I got that. Or we could also sell Boots for Fire Cannon. That is what I was gonna do in the previous game. The Tobbies are really nice here, though. Between my HP from Triforce and the ridiculous amount of sustain I'm going to have between Remedus Hydra and Bloodthirster, resistances are going to be really good. You bitch. I'll try ulting here. Nice. I should be spamming W. one. This uh, inhib is exposed, so we don't need minions to push this. Nice. And now we can do the Drake again. We got this Drake, then we got Soul, so... Nice, managed to juggle three axes there and not drop them. Wait, no way that hit me. I thought I was behind minions there. Should I exhaust her? I think I should. I'm too slow to reach my axes there, by the way. Ugh, oh, that's fucking obnoxious. 
Lobby perma slow. I hate Iceborne. Especially in the lobby. It's the fact that she doesn't even need to be melee ranged to proc it because her dash is her spammable ability. Her spammable auto attack. Okay, nice, GG. Alright gamers, we are back for another game of Driven to Diamond. This game playing Raven Ash into Azrael Karma. I wish I'd actually taken Cleanse maybe so we can remove the Exhaust and Karma W again, but Exhaust should be nice against the Hecarim at least. Hmm. Actually, if I don't attack the blue one more time, I would have been able to have two axes with Enter Lane. Oh well. I have to wait six seconds to be at full strength then, assuming I miss no axes. I would be able to reach one of them there. On the bright side, this is probably the best way to deny CS from Israel. Especially I only missed one CS, he's missed two, so not actually doing too bad. We're gonna push like this, I really need to place a ward soon. I'll use my W here just to increase my attack speed, just in case. I would otherwise miss the cannon. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be Bolt Unleashed, so I'm not expecting Hecarim to gank us anytime soon, but in low low you never know. He should be topside by now. Near the end of his clear. Kind of an annoying matchup in the sense that they both out outrange me pretty hard. Similar to how the surfing matchup was though, eventually we should hopefully be able to find opportunities to all in. It's just that right now I can't afford to eat their poke. Then I walk up and I can't do much. <coughs> Particularly without lens. Nice. Nice, her shield didn't come through in time. Okay, Hecarim is topside. He... He's only done like one clear and it took him like 4 minutes 30 seconds. To get the gank off at least. Got a double though. Ah, oh, damn it. That wasn't even gonna hit anybody because there was minions in the way. Oh no. Nice. Okay, so we know Hikram is gonna be bot side. We need to play somewhat safely here. Definitely have the wave in a really good spot. But we need to make sure we're not going randomly aggressive and give him a chance to gank in an otherwise ingankable lane. Until we at least get some more information on him. Oh, I was hoping to get that last hit. So that's a pretty good indication from Israel that Hecra might be in the area because he's going really aggressive with no mana and no other like indication that that would be a favorable fight to take. <coughs> Me personally, I'm thinking Hecra might have been one of these brushes. Armor um, also seems instant, intent on staying here within somewhat reasonable range, like she's trying to follow up on something. 
It could just be Karma being too greedy to actually base when her ADC is basing, because Ezreal should want the base with no mana. Oh, how did I miss that? I don't even know. Oh. Seems unlikely Hecarim would still be ganking. We're definitely going to want to look to base soon anyway. I'm probably just going to have to drop a wave when I base, yeah. I need to flash already, my bad. Unfortunately, I was trying to get a slow push there, but Karma's wave clear is too good, and so is Ezreal's ability to thin out waves from a safe distance. So we're just going to have to drop a wave in the end. The important thing is that I really have to make sure that I don't die and drop my stacks. Eventually, I'll get a cash out. This lane will also become much easier now that I have Vamp Scepter. But still, my kill potential should be quite low, at least until Ash gets level 6. An engaged support would have been ideal for this matchup. Oh. Oh. Okay. Ah, but you have no reason to try and last hit those, bro. Ah, oh, didn't mean to get rooted. It's not gonna be a cash out for me, sadly. Maybe if I just run in a straight line, it's line at him, I might have killed him. Oh, whoa, that was a close one. That's not where I would have aimed. I nearly got six as well, though, and I think Ezreal is staying. Maybe not. Should I stay? Mm, no, I can't. If Karma gets back into lane here and couples it with a Hecarim gank, I'm going to have a zero chance of getting a kill. And we're going to lose all of our passive stacks. We need to play extra safe here. The map is too dark and information on Hecarim is too scarce. Push the turret there. I'll wait 10 gold for boots as well. We might have actually seen Hecarim, like, recently on the map, actually. I think he probably had just ganked Rumble based off of what's going on in chat, but I hadn't noticed that. What's neat is that I currently have a 200 damage execute on my ultimate. Got him. God bless the execute. Doesn't just help you win fights, it also it also helps you secure kills from your teammates. Yeah, we should do the quick. Straight away. Do we wanna help there actually? Maybe I should. I think I should. This could be huge if we actually manage to get a proper gank here. Oh, what? Oh, fucking karma. I got exhaust. Oh, wow, I didn't see that coming. My bad. Shit. Didn't expect to be engaged on so effectively there, because I didn't see the uh, the Salas having Ashult, and I also didn't expect my team to be focused on the Herald or a fight there. Oh well. At least that was after I got that massive cash out from a passive, but the amount of gold that I miss out on here from this Bullet Wave is also really huge as well. 
It's very, uh, very much an ideal. Although not a disaster. It's a shame that Karma turned out to be there as well, because if, if that had actually been 3v2, my team would have been willing to follow up 100%. I need to be trying to preserve as much HP as possible here. It's just definitely hard against a double skill shot based lane with long range. The only way to truly consistently preserve HP there is to not lost hit. Oh, nice one. We want to make sure we don't get rooted there. Let me have the kill. Thank you. A good ult if I need it. Got her. This cannon. Uh, okay. It wasn't her fault. But some of these lost hits are her fault that I missed them. I'll shove this with ult. Okay. I don't get the lost hits on the melees, but I do force the wave to crash, basically. The Salus might come for me. Well, if it doesn't crash, it's because Hecarim is going to waste a fuck ton of his time freezing. I think he's probably just going to farm it. There's no way he's going to freeze that. What? Okay, so we got bored and didn't freeze. <laughs> Maybe he saved that a little bit of farm? Yeah, he did. <coughs> he may as well have gone the extra mile for the freeze, though, in my opinion. That's what he was going to do. Uh, honestly, I should just get a pink or nothing at all. It's not worth waiting for a long start there. I wasted too much time. Or I could have got a dagger. Do I want to do dagger here, though? I mean, I usually don't build Berserkers too early on here, for sure. But this build, what for us? I don't think there's much point in it before you have a ton of AD. Triforce and Lethal Temp are good enough as it is. Okay, Karma's mid, so Ezreal has no protection here. He already used the Z, that's how he ended up in that brush. I was a bit confused about that. But Ash, there was no need for that. It's not even about my passive, it's just the pure principle of leave the fucking kills to ready carry, man. Oh. Oh, you're kidding me. Mmm, my ult is way too early and badly end here. Oh my god. Salus is a beast. I need to get out. Ooh. Wow, nice and trolled. No, oh, that kill would have been so useful for my mana. Oh well. Do I stay? Okay, Hakram is top side. Top. But at the same uh, but I can't really shove this in by myself is the thing though, so. <laughs> it would have been nice to pick up some kills, true. But it's not that important. Like, as long as a carry is picking it up. The only thing that upsets me is if it's... Um, Ash picking it up, or to a less extent if it's J4 picking it up. Swain can also definitely make a lot of good use from the gold. Although, hmm, being 0 and 5 is not going to be that useful with gold anyway. Generally, the more behind somebody is. You would think that it's like, oh, leave the kills to the guy that's really behind so he can start to become useful. But it's more like you would want the yeah their teammates to be able to carry them as hard as possible because when you think about it zero and five swain can he one v one anybody no one and five swain can he one one v one anybody absolutely the fuck not still no maybe if he picks up seven kills but you're not gonna hand feed him seven kills him picking up the occasional kill here and there doesn't really change much about his situation is why it would be much better to just leave the kills to me even if swain is a carry who also makes good use of gold Okay, Hecarim is dead at least, but we don't know where Salus is. Oh, but that was a big shutdown on the Salus as well, I just realized. Oh, that would have been great to have on me. Now I see why he was so mad at the Swain. <laughs> I thought it was just a measly 300 gold. <clears throat> really?
I'm scared to go too aggressive here because I don't know where Hecarim is. That should be a kill. Fucking Ash. Is absolutely trying her hardest to steal CS and steal kills. She just tried the last hit three minutes in a row. On top of trying to get the kill. <clears throat> Oh, wrong one. I can try and run this guy down. It's a little bit risky. I don't know where Hakrim exactly. Can I auto attack the reset my access? Thank you. I'm not going to kill them, though. I can just do as much damage as I can. That sucks. Hmm. They must have had vision. That guy was fucking ready. Well, now nah, even without vision, it still plays out exactly the same. It was purely Hecram deciding that he wanted to, to uh, ruin my day there. Even if I didn't specifically go aggressive on Ezreal, he still would have been playing that gank, I think. He just knew that I was re-entering the lane, and that made me a little bit vulnerable. Especially because he knew exactly where I would be re-entering it from. Okay, we're gonna pop towards bot instead of mid, just in case we can enter this fight in time to influence it. Okay, J4 is stalling really hard there, that's good. Nice, Salus messed up. I'm on the way, where is Hecram? Could be bot side for all we know. Start popping up some axes. Come on, there's no way she lives, surely. Oh my god, I'm so tilted. Okay, I got her. Jesus. If I ult maybe I could kill Hakram himself. Wouldn't have had to commit so hard to kill Karma as well. course of all the times to actually join the fight though he does it exactly when I'm entering the fight as well if he just joined sooner had to use his cooldowns on somebody else then I actually stood a chance at carrying the fight against them okay I think based on how this is going actually we definitely want to get hobbies and you know what if we don't need uh Collect, uh, sorry, uh, Lord Dominic, throw that at him from now on in games. I'm just gonna do Blood Tester, I think. Or at least I should try that. See what the damage and sustain is like before I actually have too much crit on AD on Draven. Oops. I have to join that fight from behind. Can't really flank. Oop. Okay. But how does she keep getting every kill, bro? Oh well. Can I kill that Hakram? No peaceful HP. I'll go for Wolves real fast while Ezreal is pushing mid. I just heard Hecrami, right? But I didn't see him. Ooh. The risk? Okay, I won't go for it. Karma's already there. If it turns out Hecrum can flank me as well or something, then it's just stupid to go for. That's terrible. I can't turn there. That sucks. I had just decided a fight wouldn't happen and then they just randomly engage or something. I think it was J4 EQing into their team and then immediately regretting it. You can't predict that. I 
If I could even do shield bow third for the Hecarim burst, he has lethality. You know what? That should sound that should be good. That sounds like a solid choice. I can always change my mind and go be um bloodthirster if I want to. Nice, that's the wave gone. Since it doesn't seem like he's gonna overstay here, let's Oh, didn't think that would reach. Oh my god. Huge, huge. No, I can't. Okay, huge, huge, huge. <laughs> That's kind of stuck there. Does he have mana for E? He does. But I can maybe chase him down through it. He's going to run out of mana soon. He's actually not got enough mana for E now. He is dead. <coughs> Hecarim was really low as well, so I guess this is probably going to be a free Drake for us. Ah, I was hoping that would give me more lost hits. Oh, hello Hecarim. Huge shutdowns. What if we do Baron now? No, we can't. No J4. That's fine. We don't need to get too greedy here. What if I were to do triple lifesteal, though? That could be pretty solid against their team, actually. With how much dive they have. Dive, dive, dive. And ranged poke. For which sustain... Well, definitely this amount of sustain is super overkill for the poke, though. But for the dive, it might be good. We'll see. My lost item definitely needs to be Lord Dominix. Not just that... At that point, it's not just about... Um, Dealing extra damage, it's about making sure that I'm getting as much life still as possible by dealing more damage with each auto, which I need armor pen for. Oh, what a time for me to use E. I wanted to see how much damage that would deal to the minions. I don't know when your E one shots costers. <coughs> I'll do the wolves again. Jesus, I have 32% life still right now. This rumble steals all the mid farm, then goes top to farm that as well. What a chad. What an absolute giga chad. This is such a boring game. Somebody engage. Somebody run it down again, please. I need something to happen. Hey, there we go. The random mass engage. Out of nowhere. You love to see it. Holy crap, that's the castle right one. Bad flash, man. Fuck, that was super close. Damn, that blows. Yeah, I don't know where Swain ended up. I guess he was maybe keeping the backline distracted. 
J4 died with ult up though. That's a definitely a weird one. He had so much time to ult. He acted like it was Selmas the whole time. Your inhibitor has been destroyed. Okay, I got at least one kill there. So at least I cashed out whatever passive I had. I got ignited there as well by the Salas, which made my life still less. That was pretty annoying. He didn't do much, but he did make sure that I couldn't survive. I don't think I was even the lowest HP person near him, but he was desperately trying to kill me of all people. And it paid off, whether he knows it or not. Oh man, that's... Soul for us, by the way, if we get that Drake. But we shouldn't... I don't think we should expect to get it. We should be giving it. Okay, well, so long as they, don't, they get Drake and not Baron as well, this isn't too bad. Definitely one of the biggest things people need to learn, though, to climb out of Loyola is just... Learn to give stuff up. Spe like, Drakes especially. Sometimes even Barons. You lose so many games by just being unwilling to give up objectives that you have to give up, so you end up giving a kill on the objective as well. Even in high low, people struggle with that. But it's so much worse at low elo. I'm just mainly getting mana back here. I don't want to sell my Darren's Blade for Bloodthirster when I know I can have them both. Just let me have this. There we go. Why are we not grouped for Drake Soul? Yeah, as I said, like, if we don't expect to win a fight, then it doesn't matter how great the reward would be for winning the fight and getting the Infernal Soul. We are not going to get the soul. We're not expecting to win a fight at the moment. So contesting is just stupid. Doesn't matter how... Like, if the enemies were going to get soul from that, then you absolutely have to, like, win this... Like, contest the soul or, it's, or you just lose the game. Then fair enough. But it's more like, if we get the soul, we win the game. Maybe. Or, like, potentially. But we don't have to do it now. We can do it later. We can wait till we get some random picks that can, like, help us do the soul, you know? Whereas we're on no timer to do it because the enemies aren't anywhere near soul themselves. Oh god, he's got a lot of tenacity, I think. Nice one. Ooh, maybe I can kill Jax here? Got him. Ow. Okay, there's Salas. I was thinking he was going to be in that brush. I was trying to chew Kazi. Ah, drop my axes, my bad. Such an annoying matchup, actually, <laughs> if you're even against Ezreal. Thankfully, it's not too bad at this stage because of just the sheer amount that I'm life stealing. Like, you may think he's doing some good progress here, but he's not really. Look at that. But at the same time, it's like, how can I ever kill him? Especially once he finishes Cyril does, there's no way I can actually reach him. Maybe if he didn't have Jax protecting him there, that would have been my window. Your 
can't fucking see where Salas went. I shouldn't have exhausted, actually. He's not that scary. Even if I wanted to slow, it wasn't worth it. Got him. Where's... Oh, fucking Hecarim. Ooh. Come on. Yes, the CC chain. Wow, almost a Penta. Okay, now we're in a better spot for Drake. Better position, but it's still... Like, it's, it's spawning very close to their respawns. Like, Hecarim will be up for this Drake. But we have time to set up on it and, you know, set up vision. Get into a good spot. They don't actually have any inhibs, so they shouldn't have pushing lanes. That's ah, a shame I didn't have enough for my elixir there, my bad. He still doesn't have Cerulez. He should probably have it on next base, though, I assume. Just the bent. I don't know when his base is, but. Can save my ult. Uh, to kill him if he get, actually is looking like he's gonna get away there. All right, hopefully we actually get the streak. So that'll be nice. Nice, huge, huge. Forty-three percent life steal. Imagine li actually life stealing for literally almost half of your HP. Actually, no, it's more... When I get the um, Red Elixir, this is going to be more than half of... Sorry, for, for more than half of my damage. At least on the champions. Combo melt with her as a gas. Get her low. Get some damage to Hecarim, too. Oh. Good damage. gonna have these so I don't want to bother him trying to damage him at the start okay oh come on oof that was so insanely close if I just can get near a minion I can life still insanely fast okay nice Raptors will do. Nice. Okay, what can we do with this? Oh, Swain was not even part of this fight, by the way. What the fuck? Is he trolling or what? <laughs> Clearly, the path to victory was winning a team fight, but at least we managed it without him. We can do Baron, I'm just gonna push a turret first though. Should have got another dropper proc with a foster key there. I don't know if I really want to change anything in my build. It's working quite well for now. I don't really want to sell Tobbies when it's so effective against Tycrum. You can have the last hit. I just need the buff. It would get me level 18, but hopefully I can get level 18 before the next fight anyway. I'm pretty close. There it is. 
would be so insanely lucky if I actually managed to get into a fight and die before getting 18. Ultimate is on a fairly low cooldown, actually. Look at that damage. That could have been so much more if I managed to hit them on the second swing as well. Azure has very little lifesteal. Got him. Ooh. Got him. Timed up perfect. Well, not quite perfect, but it did manage to hit him anyway. I was afraid it was actually going past them because I hit it a bit early, but... The hitbox at the back seems to be quite strong. Close. One auto might have killed Ezreal there. Got him. Predicted the flash. Or the E, whatever it was. I'll exhaust tech chrome. Dropping axes, god damn it, otherwise he'd be dead. We wait to be stunned until we th actually throw an axe. Ooh. If we get stunned while we're meant to catch the axe, then we might lose it. Alright, nice one, GG. That build was super good there. Alright gamers, so for you it's been probably not even 5 seconds since the last game. Uh, for me actually it's been 4 days though. Because I recorded like half a Draven 2 Diamond video and then I was like, what if I play Skyrim? So I s installed Skyrim, looked into a bunch of mods, spent like a day and a half just looking up mods. And now after finishing half of the Thieves Guild quest lines, half of the Dawn Guard DLC and half of the Companions quest line, I'm finally done with my addiction to Skyrim. Four days later I'm ready to return back to Draven to Diamond. So if I seem rusty just all of a sudden, very suddenly, that would be why. I have not played League in four days. Alright, so we're going to be playing Draven Ash into... Caitlyn Leona. Gotta run cleanse against Leona. Absolutely obligatory, especially when she has an ADC like Caitlyn, who benefits a lot from lockdown, so she can place traps underneath me. Probably could have been walking up uh, there to Lasseter when I knew she wanted, well, hit her while I knew she wanted to go for Lasseter on my minion. And I knew she had to walk forwards for that unless she wanted to queue it, which would be an easy dodge. Okay, decent traps. This kind of actually um, limits my ability to move forwards onto Caitlyn. I, I've at least got to be very m mindful of my movement to make sure I don't step on a trap. I'm going to place a ward up here, or Ash can do it either way. Let's get some vision down. And now, as I'm laning up here, it's a lot easier to avoid these traps. I don't have to be too afraid of these Leona engages. You know, you know, a potential Leona engage in that position. Like, I don't care that I was in her E-range because she can't really engage on me when I got a slow push going here. I got too many min minions compared to her. I don't think that would end well for her. I would have to be cautious here, but she isn't really positioned to engage on me, which she should be. Because Caitlyn can just potentially outrange me there, which the only thing I can do in response to that is zoom into her, which would be, uh, you know, just leaving myself vulnerable to lane engage. Here, hopefully I should be fine, because Caitlyn just wasn't in range to follow up. I need to cleanse if Leona ignites me. I missed the next of night. Oh, and I missed the kill. Okay. I think I can probably kill her though. Oh no! Okay, that was insanely lucky. I shouldn't have even bothered picking up that axe because I think I could have actually avoided um, dying to the minions there if I just ran out of the aggro. But oh well. Not too bad. Ah, that is. I definitely wouldn't have even bothered going for that if I actually got the kill on Leona. Because I. <laughs> Well, it should it should have been fine. I really did make a big misplay there, just flashing into the Caitlyn Q, which I meant to flash past. Realistically, if I don't get hit by this Q, there's just no way she can kill me if her is on cooldown. So my bad on that. But either way, uh, as a whole, it's a pretty decent outcome. 
Kaelin got a double because uh, she just happened to be the one that died, but overall, I think I got the... Uh, yeah, enough gold from my passive that I actually came out on top in gold there, just from the 2v2 kills. And then when you take account the uh, wave state, this is also like hugely beneficial to us. As usual, we just go for the ramp up the rush. <laughs> okay, that's pretty over. Ooh, first kill and gets the kill. Okay, are they gonna be going for Drake? I'm gonna start shoving. Oh, the, oh, that was um, the another mid laner, not their jungler. Okay, but they are gonna be doing Drake though, so I'm gonna start shoving. Caitlyn is helping with that. I'm gonna try and make her miss farm. It's a bit awkward though, cause it's a can of wave, so it takes forever to shove. This Nocturne we know isn't level six at least, so I can't be punished for trying to shove this in if I'm smart and I have vision, which I do. I mean, either way, I just need to start walking away when they. Kill the Drake. Oh, I just noticed Leon was fucking walking over before the Drake was done. Okay, I've still got cleanse if I need it. But we need to start leaving. Or I mean, we got Nafiri with us. We should probably be able to win. I'll cleanse that just so I can catch the hook. Definitely from a defensive perspective, I didn't need to do that. But in case that fight got massively dragged out, I would really appreciate not having to drop an X. So that, um, in case I did drop an X later, I could use that next... Q instead of having to use it early. Yeah, we picked up a lot of gold, about 200 gold from that one again. So at least even though we're actually behind in kills compared to Caitlyn, we're getting so much more gold per kill to the point where we're ahead either way. Did she just misclick her stun on a minion or what? I don't recall being stunned there. Anyway, Kellen was not in a position to follow up with anything except Q there, so I wasn't afraid to get engaged on there. Any damage I do take anyway. Of course, we got the vamps up there, so I'm just happy to take these trades. Even if they were slightly negative, I wouldn't care. It's still good. I shouldn't base, but to be fair, we should probably look to base very soon, because I don't know when knocked in a 6 exactly, but it might be... Sooner than I might expect. Yeah, who knows if he had sex off of those camps or not. Hopefully we can complete draw force in our next base anyway. Already got 62 adoration stacks. Remember, that's pretty much like 62 potential execution damage on my ultimate. True damage. Hear that? Okay, kill an OE. I don't have lens though, and I don't know where Nocturne is. I'd really r rather wait for Nocturne to or get some information on Nocturne on the map before I do anything overly aggressive. Or we can just hear the Nocturne ult of course as well, that's also fine. Now I know that I'm safe to go aggressive here. Yep. Ash can use her ult. Use her ult. Use her ult. My axes are about to run out, bro. I don't know why I ulted though, by the way, that was pretty troll. <laughs> I don't know why she wouldn't ult though, I could have easily been a kill. Oh well.
Well, I know why I ulted. I just saw her go near the wall, so in my head I was like, ooh, free double ultimate hit. But just because you can hit an ultimate doesn't necessarily mean it's a good ultimate to hit, you know? Ah, oh, damn it. I let my axes drop without realizing it. It's all the Skyrim, man. It's messing with my head. Ooh, close. Okay, I can't... Oh my god. I was so cl close to dying to the turret there. Jesus. Oh my god. Okay. I need to make absolutely sure that I live here since I've got quite a bit of passive stacks. Not a game-losing amount if I l die there, obviously, but... Uh, it's fine, Ash. I messed up there slightly as well. That was some unfortunate minion block, though. I was way closer to the turret than I needed to be. I definitely did not put myself there. No intentionally. An enemy has been slain. Oof, nice one. Places to go, need to see. All right, anyway. Regardless, we got the trial for power spike, so that was a pretty successful lane phase, I would say. My main objective there was to base on enough gold for fire force, and it did. That'll massively increase my chances of being able to get a kill in the near future. Nice, using my E there just to be absolutely safe. Hopefully I don't need it to be able to or anything. I was worried that uh, maybe... I was pretty sure my axe would kill Ash. Sorry, I'd kill Caitlyn. But on the off chance that I didn't, I was really afraid Ash would just throw a random auto and steal the kill. So I just threw a random me. That would also steal the kill in that scenario. Yeah, there was a knock in there, wasn't there? Fight here. Can't see the fight, which is so it means it's kind of risky to walk out into it, but nice. I think Caitlyn will probably die here as well. I need to use my Q to preserve my axes there. Got her. Intentionally dropped an axe there so I didn't have terrible positioning. Uh, I think I missed a different axe that I didn't mean to miss, though, but, oh well. <laughs> One of them was on purpose. I can't actually kill her there. Is there much point to preserve my axes here? I'm gonna try it, but I'm not even sure if I can get in a lane in time to make use of this. No, not really. Oh well. Was there a plant I could have done? No. I should have done a drop for spark on that win minion with my W, my bad. Um. Oh god, knocked on his bot side. But we know he doesn't have ult, so it's not bad. Got the solo planning too. And that gives, well, th this overall, this whole sequence of events gives me enough for Ravenous Hydra. I do kind of need to stay to defend against this though, it's the awkward thing. I can use my ultimate to clear most of the wave at least. There we go. Okay, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't bad at all. Ooh. I've got cleanse in case Leona goes for an Omega Punisher. Ooh. Nocturne might have ulted up by now, so... Let's be a little bit careful. I'm hoping that if he does jump on me alone, like even if a Leona ults, I just cleanse the Leona ult. And then I should be able to kill Nocturne really easily. Especially because the fear will last less because of the cleanse tenacity. 
Alright, but I'm not pushing this turret though. That is bait. I just need to spend my gold. That is the utmost priority here. It would be really troll to continue laning here without spending all of my gold. Uh, what were we doing third item here? Oh yeah, we had decided that we were going to do no more collector, at least try out no more collector. Start doing bloodthirst of third. If we don't need full damage, or if we do need full damage, then Lord Dominix. I don't think I need Lord Dominix here. We can definitely go for the Bloodthirster and see how that goes. Ooh, I was alt-tab there. almost walked into a trap. Literally and figuratively. Did she use her net? No, okay, it was her Q. I swear it looked like her fucking net. Ooh. Damn. Oh, no. Fuck me. My bad. I was troll. I thought that- <laughs> No, I wasn't gonna die to that, by the way. I thought the Ashel was gonna hit. Oh well. Hmm, did not turn ult recently? Yeah, he did, he did. I don't know where Diana is, though. That is mildly concerning. We could do with some vision there. What is the ping for vision? Uh, I keep picking the wrong thing. I'm pretty sure we're not getting ganked, though, if Caitlyn and Leon are both mid. That's where the whole ping used to be. I tried to ping it, but things are fucking bugged. As usual. Okay, I've got one longsword too many here. I'm doing Bloodthirster. That's fine. Could sell it for a Crick Cloak, but I'm not even sure a Crick Cloak would be better than Longsword here. It might be. Thing is, the axes themselves don't actually crit, it's only the auto behind the axe that crits, so it's not as crazy efficient on Draven as you'd think. Ooh. Okay, that's how I was hoping a Nocturne gank would happen <laughs> if I have to cleanse up. Nice. Okay, I've already got that, I'm just gonna keep going mid, I can lifesteal. I've got 22% lifesteal already, and infinite axes. The only funnily enough could actually screw me here if she has ignite. But it's not gonna happen if she doesn't hit her E, at least. Alright, let's go for the Drake. Actually, I'm gonna prioritize their camps. They're gonna be busy defending this world. If there's any camps to take. This ward here as well, so we can see if we're getting flanked. Yeah, we can take Grump. Can't go for the wolves, because that I had a window to take the wolves there, but the longer I wait, the riskier it is. Definitely can't go back for them. But the Grump is fine. Alright, I can base now. We can sell the longsword for this. Or, I mean, this thing is, at this point, I actually have so much gold. I could just wait until I have the full Bloodthirster. Then I don't have to sell the longsword, so I saved myself 100 gold, which, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't sound like much. But you never know when you might lose a game because of 100 gold. So if I can get away with waiting for the full blood there, so without it being massively greedy, which I don't think it is here, then it should be fine. Just as long as I'm not getting caught for no reason. I'm not trying to get this full ace up, I just don't think that staying for another minute or two is a, tr like... A terrible mistake to be making. Alright, get me out of here. I definitely don't want to be looking for a fight when I'm sitting on three, well, 2,500 gold, whatever it was. Nice one. 
This build actually lends itself so well to a fucking super sustained focus build. Like, we could absolutely just do shield both third like we did in, I believe, the previous game. Sorry, I don't mean literally third, as, as in uh, for my third lifestyle item. Where am I- where am I aiming this ultimate at? Right, she goes down that corridor. Ooh. Oh, missed an axe, my bad. Oh, she's still out of ult. I didn't think she did. My bad. Okay, that was probably a big shutdown, right? Yeah, thousand gold shutdown. Not worth. She's almost at the minions. She probably will die to Udyr. She's still at flash, goddamn. And she had ignite. The fucking bitch. The audacity to have ignite there, man. I swear that's the only reason I actually died. Not even just the ult, the ignite. Producing all my life still. Alright, do I want to lure, lure Dominix here or do I want to do shield bow? So they have some armor on the jacks. Even he's starting to actually build some armor, but he's also gonna have more armor than I realized from his ultimate. Um Dana might be going for Zanya's second with that. Lana's got a lot of armor. I'm just gonna go for the Lord Dominix, I think. Then we can do Shilbo final item if we really want all that extra survivability. Which I think would make sense in a game like this, because this is like, not exactly a, more of a bruiser, but still like a pretty, you know, somebody who can dive on me. Then it's like full dive assassin, full dive assassin. I think a fairly defensive focus setup is decent here. Even Leona wants to dive on me. And she's even going to have some damage with us on Fire Cape. There is a Nocturne in the area, and he probably does have ultimate, but I, like, if he jumps on me right now, he's gonna be alone. I don't think there's anybody that can really follow up. Killen is a bit too far away, so at that point, I'm not really afraid. I can try and take these Raptors when they come. Diana is definitely something, someone whose follow-up I would be afraid of, though, so. Yeah, if they're both here, then. I'm definitely gonna keep at least my distance from Leona. So we'll just take whatever we can there, and then we just return mid. I'm keeping my distance from where I would expect Leona or Diana to be, which is like top side ish. She might be there. See, I don't really want to be pulling this up, but okay, we do see that Nocturne was going to the Golems, but you know, that's pretty much off there. Wasn't really willing to follow that up. Ah, oh, missed an axe. I'll probably do Merc Treads this game, by the way. Really good against Leona, really good against Deanna, just for the resistances in general. Good against Nocturne Fear. Decent against the Jack Stun. And against the Jack's mixed damage, of course. Use that W just for a Trophorus proc, just to be absolutely sure, because I wasn't sure it would otherwise kill the cannon. I also heard that pretty much everybody has started building tank ADCs randomly all of a sudden while I've been playing Skyrim. Don't know what that's all about, but I heard about a pink Draven build that does Triforce into Black Cleaver. Maybe I'll give that a go in the next game or something. Whatever the build, though, I'm sure people are still just sleeping on Triforce with Ravenous Hydra, which is confusing because, you know, it's not like people... Don't realize Ravenous Hydra is good on Draven. There is that Essence Reaver into Ravenous Hydra build or whatever it go however it goes. You know, people build it on Lethality Draven, but they just don't think to also build it on Triforce Draven. For some reason. Even though it gives you enough CDR to have permanent taxes. Which I think is a pretty big deal on Draven. It's a huge advantage Lethality has over crit builds. Oh, I've got Lord Dominix, by the way. I don't necessarily want to be staying for much longer.
Alright, I'm out of here. So yeah, whatever Draven build would do. Okay, I mean, to be fair, if you were to do a Draven build with Trophers and Black Cleaver, then at that point, Ravenous Hydra might be overkill CDR. Uh, or, a, you know, Ability Haste. Because I don't know how much purpose there really is in a Ability Haste on Draven besides getting to that point of infinite axes. It's not bad, I guess, because you would get, like, more access to make up for any axes you drop. But obviously that has, like, diminishing returns. The better you get at Draven, the less you actually need that Ability Haste. Uh, you see, because she took those three minions... You can see I literally just lost a cannon for that. Our cannon, I like our wave wasn't being lost hit by anybody, and our cannon lived just fine. That's a perfect example of a situation where supports would be like, oh, nobody's on the lane anyway, I can just lost hit. But because they're not lost hitting when the minions are like 3 HP only, they're pushing the wave whether they like it, whether they intend to or not. I have no idea what that knocked on ult is, and I'm busy catching axes. Oh, it's top. Try throwing an ult here. Ah, it's not going to hit anyone. Try and redirect it to the right slightly. I had someone there. <laughs> I probably should have just been walking to the fight though. Making sure to maintain my axes this whole time as well. Oh my god, that Jack's HP. Okay, I'm not gonna bother going for him. How did she instantly drop that vision, by the way? Holy shit, that is so much damage to take. Ah, that's ridiculous. The fact that. Deanna just, I don't know, like, don't, doesn't that live, leave, like, a lingering vision for, like, two seconds? Yeah, reveals a larger area for two seconds. I got vision for, like, 0.5 seconds. That didn't make any sense. It cost me all of my HP. Just for a, I guess, a bug. Let me see that again. The fact that Jax came back and forced my flash as well. Ugh. That doesn't make any sense, man. Where's my lingering two-second vision? I think it bugged because she killed it so fast. But it's not meant to be tied to that blue trinket, I don't think. Weird. Um, yeah, we'll do... Mark Treads. There's another ramp up there. We could do more if we wanted to, but I don't think we're that desperate for defenses against Diana. I think that bug actually... Or it might not even be a bug, it might just be like an, un an unintended oversight with the change that they made with Blue Trinket a while back. Where instead of actually revealing the area, the blue like the cost itself, now it's just tied to like... The blue trinket itself revealing when somebody walks nearby, and the war I think the what happened is the ward killed before got re before it revealed someone or got revealed by someone. Like the game didn't consider it having revealed someone yet before it died, and so my vision just got like completely screwed over. I don't think that's how it de like definitely that's not how it used to work before that blue trinket change, if that if what I'm saying is right. No oh, well. Holy shit, I don't have to move at all here. What the hell? What's going on? I've never had to... Like, like, you can do that for like three axes and then it suddenly starts forcing you to move. I don't know why that worked for so long. Weird. Oof, close one. So awkward that I don't really feel comfortable using F keys on Draven while catching axes. I mean, you realistically can't. You cannot be catching axes while looking, while having your screen like there. You know, nobody is that good at Draven. Surely, you cannot be looking here and just catching axes farming bot. <laughs> no way. Anyway, it was top. Taking a big risk here. Nope. 
Oh god, it's Jax, one of the people I really don't want to fight. Mm. Oh, I nearly had him. Damn it, if I hadn't missed like 1x. That was a close one though. I think my team was getting some stuff for that at least. Where did I miss an X? I had two here. Was it this one? No. Oh, no, I only have one X here. Then I, then I get another X. Oh yeah, that, I lost that one. Why did I lose that one? Huh, it just kind of spawned right on top of me, so I couldn't really catch that while kiting. Why did it spawn on top of me? Yeah, look, that, that is weird, isn't it? It's not meant to spawn on top of you. <laughs> what? I thought that only happens if you're standing next to walls. What is going, with, going on with Max's this game? Weird. Anyway, we got enough turrets that I got shield bow. And we got triple in hips, so... Yeah, overall they spent a lot making that happen. Not too bad. Let's all just farm camps here. Well, not too much point in farming camps. I'm already full build, of, uh, after all. I just need level 18. Oh my god, that's a lot of damage, holy shit. Okay, thankfully we're full build this time. <laughs> not sure if he had No, I think he ulted there, didn't he? I'm not sure though. Probably for me. Yep. No, you're kidding me. How did I not break that? Oh, that's a joke. I can't believe that didn't actually break his fear. I thought it would be fine. So long as I was far enough away from Diana. The Leon appearing was a bit inconvenient. <laughs> Come on, that is the biggest stretch, man. Holy shit. Oh well. Yeah, because uh, the fact that Leona appeared meant that I couldn't just run down anymore, so I had to run to the right, which made it a bit easier for Dina to actually get in my range. One on one with Nocturne, it wasn't going to be quite as bad, but still, I can't really one-shot him before he fears me, which is why I needed to break the fear at the very least. The moment he fears me, then I just get called by his teammates. So I'm guaranteed to die, and if I maybe also kill Nocturne. Don't really need to use maxes this early. It's a waste of mana. Ideally, I want to use it like five seconds before I reach the red buff. There we go, because now I get two axes. I'm time to reach the red, and I'm not wasting mana maintaining my two axes. I think my team is ending anyway. <laughs> All right, GG. Probably shouldn't actually auto unless it's an axe. Probably, probably get more DPS that way. Nice one. Okay, so I got one kill there. I'm not too faulty about that. All right, gamers, we are back for another game of Driven to Diamond. This game playing Draven Shaco into Samira Pantheon. Uh, fuck it, let's do coal. See how that goes. I don't know if I can really give a leash here, though. It's fine, Shaco can. His box is gonna be a really good leash anyway. No following these footsteps. Yeah, this game gonna be... No, sorry, I already mentioned what the matchup is. Did I mention it was Samira Pantheon? Well, it's Samira. We're facing Samira Pantheon. Which is a pretty scary bot lane, but at least we have Shaco against an engage support, which can be nice if Pantheon has no idea where he can safely engage without getting hit by a box. 
I should have positioned more aggressively there, my bad. I should have been posturing towards the Pantheon, because as soon as I cleanse and I am catching axes, I actually win that fight pretty hard, I would say. Oh well. The moment I'm cutting backwards, because, you know, it's the uh, expected move to do as a ranged champion against a melee champion, then Panther can just walk away and disengage. And my cleanse is for nothing. Just saved myself a little bit of damage, but overall not worth it in my opinion. Oh, didn't think of that. This is how I learned that he has Hex Flash. Not too bad a trade though. I push him to go off for some reason, but we'll pop it now. Why did Samira start cold, by the way? That is incredibly troll, especially like as one of the like most dive heavy ADCs where you're constantly going to be going in and losing HP voluntarily. Makes no sense to take cold over. Oh my god, these pushes. Full over Doran's blade. Mm, I couldn't quite finish her because I didn't catch every axe, my bad. We could trade a one for one here. Oh, but the problem is I do have a shutdown here. Usually, though, I would gladly trade a one for one here because she did hello with three. So I guess maybe her W would have turned that in her favor anyway. But if I could guarantee that I can like kill her there and then just die to the turret, that is so worth for us because of how much CS she would move. Uh, CS she would lose. But uh, the bigger the shutdown that I have, obviously, the more I have to consider, you know, how much gold would she actually gain? Would it actually make it worth it compared to losing all that farm? Or even if it technically was at least like even in gold and then she at least misses out on more XP. You still gotta consider, you know, there's a the risk factor and it's not 100% guaranteed to work. And if it does work, then we're at best going even in gold. Then probably not worth it. Just I'm used to not having a shutdown at 4 minutes into the game. Okay, we're just gonna slow push here. I'm guessing Samira is based, but I can't really shove this in time to actually crush it in time to make her miss farm. So instead, we're gonna maximize the amount of CS she loses by slow pushing. Especially with this being a cannon wave, we can absolutely slow push a second wave or a third wave after this one as well. Or rather, we can slow push this wave and it won't crash faster than expected. At least that's what I'm expecting. Let's see. Will it push faster than I need to? The awkward thing, of course, about slow pushing on Draven is the fact that you're on a timer. You have to hit a minion at some point. Even if it's not about to die, just because of your axe system. But yeah, this is super easy. Whenever it's a cannon wave, you have so much uh, like liberty to slow push there. It takes forever to uh, push a cannon wave, which means it's extre extremely hard to accidentally push a cannon wave too fast. Yeah, I'm not really afraid of Lily here. But it did prevent me from zoning Samira properly. Actually, no, I can just do Sheen here, surely. This would literally only be 10 AD. Probably not worth it. Compared to Sheen.
I was actually thinking he might do that. Just trying to cost him as much HP as possible. Because he shouldn't be moving forwards like that. So we just continue freezing here. At this point, they're in a pretty shitty spot because Pentium got way too low for no reason. And the closer we are to the turret, the more useless Pentium engages are anyway. Samira definitely can't do much without Pentium engaging. In fact, her champion as well is also pretty limited by us being near the turret. She also wants to dive in for max effectiveness. She doesn't do too much in fights if all she can land is autos and Qs, you know? God, she's losing so much harm from this. So am I, apparently, because some of these melees can't help themselves. Got axes, need victims. I'm tempted to use my ultimate on her. It might execute her, but I'm not 100% sure. So I do get 124 after three down. Oop. There we go. <laughs> I didn't even notice that was going on while I was talking. So that was pretty fucking troll from Shaco, but it's absolutely worth it. The only minor concern here, potentially major if it actually happens, is that I could get ganked by Lilia. I'm going to place a ward there, and I just need to shove during this very... Okay, I have to leave. Super annoying. Uh, she is level 7. Just She does a vault. Okay, she doesn't have ult. Mm. Okay, I have to leave it like that, though. At the very least, okay, I missed some CS, but the wave crashed overall, which is great. That would have been a disaster if the wave didn't crash. Not bad, not bad. Got so much gold from that. Some miracle as well. Should I get boots here? Nah, we'll get this. That's the awkward thing about Cole. With this build, is you're getting so many fucking different components. There's no room for boots at the moment. Or if I got tier 1 boots, then there wouldn't be room for a Kindle gem. But I mean, to be fair, neither of those are really important components. It's not the end of the world. I don't think boots are that important for Draven's lane phase, usually. Oh, whoa, what did I do there? How about... I really butchered what I intended to do there. Just keep walking forwards and hit whoever I can. And then just immediately walk backwards. I don't want to get into an extended fight here. I don't want to get it actually engaged on. If I can avoid it. But every single Q that I land is just so much damage. Nothing they can possibly return except the null line is going to match it. Ooh. Yep. Oh, nice. Not too bad. It's a shame Shaco died. I didn't quite want to just throw my ultimate into the brush to kill Pantheon when I could also kill Samira with my ultimate. Because if she didn't just stop and fight me, then I think I would have needed Melt to kill her. Oh my god, that's awkward. Okay, huge. Ah, oh well. Managed to block the W, but it wasn't enough. That's, oof, massive shutdown to support that actually scales quite well with gold, I would say. It's not ideal, but it's better than handing the gold over to Sumira for sure. I don't think the Shaco's performing too well. Could have frozen that too. Oh god, just another free kill for Samira. Yes, but it's also a free double kill for Katarina, so I can't really complain. Katarina seems to be doing quite well as well. Well, especially after that double. But even aside from that, she has so many assists. 
Looks like she's been getting some good roams off. And this is another one. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. She just costs me an axe every time she does that. Got her. That was lose-lose for her in terms of where she popped to avoid the axe. The only way to dodge that axe, the way I timed that, or um, played that out with my E forcing her into that particular direction. To avoid that ultimate, she would have needed to walk into me. And she did, did end up walking into me, but she did it too late. So she ate the ult and the axe, but I think she was going to die to either one anyway. Or potentially I could have chased her down. I can't remember exactly what the circumstances were, but it was pretty fucked there. Nice one, Shaco. Did I miss a plating there? I potentially did. Not bad. So she have hobbies now. Yeah, I could literally tell from how little damage my axe did. Oh, you're kidding me. I was so close, man. Fuck. I was trying so hard not to walk into the turret there. I played it really well, though, in terms of, like, how close I got to the turret without actually getting into the turret range. Rampage. Oh. So the fact that I had to spend so long, tr like, tr or, uh, trying to balance catching my axes with not walking into the turret range that I spent... That time not auto attacking, which kind of cost me the fight, I think. Oh well. I also had a lot of unspent gold, which is, you know. As I'm always saying, something you really want to avoid. Why was I fighting right away? Can't remember now. I think just because I thought I was so ahead that it would work, but clearly not. But Tobby's kept her alive long enough that she could just use her ultimate and. Unload, unload most of most of her burst. I did obviously cancel her ult, but she got some damage out of it. And anyway, we've got infinite uh, time on the axes now. Which makes it perfect for freezing. I'm no longer reliant on auto attacking to maintain my axes. Ah, oh, god damn it. Yeah, we got cleanse up. I don't know why I keep doing that. I keep throwing my axe backwards and I'm trying to kite backwards and axing forwards. <laughs> Blame Skyrim for that. Let's admire me. I think Lily initially just wanted to gank, then she saw that we were just going to be freezing and she decided to be a good jungler and just break the freeze for her teammates. Kind of annoying. Because if she hadn't been going for a gank, that wouldn't work in the first place. And she wouldn't have even been in position to decide to break the freeze. Oh. Nice, not bad. Ooh, she got a double though. When is the straight up? 45 seconds. Ah, damn it, Max. Okay. I want to try and help her? Yeah, most of their team is still dead. We can fight here for sure. If she'll actually, like, bring this fight over to me. Why is she so intent on dragging them away? What the hell? Okay, I got her. Oh, come on. I got CC'd so long immediately after Bayorn. All of his cooldowns came back up right at that moment. Fuck me. But she needed to drag him over to me, man. That's really badly played from her. Oh, well. The rest of that was just very unlucky timing, though. Unless Orn had just not hit Ari with- Oh, sorry, hit Katarina with any cooldowns at all, then the fact that I just got, like, triple CC'd there was incredibly unlucky. Don't be jealous. Oh, well. Uh, what do we want to do next? I think we'll probably do Shield Bow, I guess, for the Orn. 
Sorry, not uh, shield ball. Lord Dominic's. Maybe it's a little bit greedy though, considering. I mean, Orn is not a, exactly ahead, whereas I am really ahead, so I probably can cope without building armor pen. And their comp is like very bursty, so shield bow would be nice. Or bloodthirster, just anything sort of ability focused. Ah, oh, drop my axe, my butt. But Katarina! So desperate for the lost hit that she turned around and died. My mistake or not, like, come on. You do not risk death to steal kills from a Draven. I don't know if I even had that many stacks on me, but... I bet you she didn't check. Oh well. I mean, I wouldn't have had stacks on me to be fair, because I had just killed Aurion. I didn't just immediately walk back into lane there, didn't I? Anyway, the bright side though about doing Lord Dominix is that even Samira has armor, so armor pen is definitely not a bad choice here. I could get a bigger meta prospect from Crick Cloak, but in the long term, if I'm gonna be getting one component towards Shield Bow, or whatever it is, I'd much rather it be Longsword into Vamp Scepter than just Crit Cloak. As long as we don't have Infinity Edge, we don't scale amazingly with Crit. We're not even going for a full AD build since Draw Force didn't get that much AD. Nice one. Let's go. Whoa. Nicely done. Holy crap, she nearly died. Yeah, let's go for this, I guess. Perfection. I got that. Hmm. These guys really shouldn't be the ones to go for it, though. I can go for it. They need the base. This Herald is now or never, though. This is kind of risky, to be fair, if none of my teammates can actually really help. Okay, the Ennis here. Where's Lilia? Bro, if my if I'm not in range to auto, then why does he even start to auto? Also, does this Lilia just not evolve the entire game or what? Ugh. No, nah. I was so sure I would actually survive that last auto. Maybe it's because of Jack show that I didn't. Oh well. 4v4v5, four, four it's not terrible. And although we barely lost the fight by one kill, we actually do overall gain more gold. I mean, aside from shutdowns, because yeah, I mean, I, I guess I have a shutdown. I always have a shutdown, but <laughs> shutdowns aside, this is overall worth it for us, I guess. Even though Ari also got a turret, ours was at least worth more. Do I want to go for Shield Ball? I think I probably will. Samira's. It's good against Samira, good against Pantheon, good against Ari. I might just end up going for Bloodthirst if I can afford it on the same base, but otherwise, just the fact that Shield Ball is cheaper makes me be happy. To go for a shield bow. This is where Draven shines. Nice ass. Hmm. Okay, nice. Managed to preserve the Herald's HP there. Yeah, this trick isn't even spawning, by the way. I don't know why everybody was in the river. Oh, there's a Herald on mid lane. This is a risky position to be in, because we're in a position to be flanked, but it's looking good. If 
Finally, I didn't throw my axe backwards. Oh god. Okay. I need to leave. Don't know where Ari is, but she might have ult. Okay, then I guess we'll just do Bloodthirster in the end. Ah, stunned me though. Damn it, I needed to try and avoid getting into her, into her E range, which I failed at. See, for those kind of situations, she'll build B Supreme. Because it started that at full HP, pretty much. Wasn't even able to lifestyle off of the Pantheon either. Hmm. Maybe I will actually do Shield Bow. Oh, yeah. You know what? We'll do Shield Bow. And do we want to do Tabbies or Merc Treads? Merc Treads are not looking too important with... The way Lilia has not even been able to get a single ult on me. So I guess we'll do Tabbies. And then we're going to do Black Cleaver. Which is what people are building second when they do this uh, Bruiser slash Tank Draven build. But I just don't, can't imagine this really better than Revenous Hydra. Especially when I'm rushing the ramps up there, which for me, I just think it's just a no-brainer on Draven. We've seen how much sustain he gets from it. Oh, I felt that super hard again. Okay, I thought Ari would charm me. Okay. That was not the best played fight, to be honest. Nice one. Okay, I can just walk into their base and take the inhibitor. We don't need minions. Using W or Q whenever I have a Triforce proc available. I mean, maybe just end even. Okay, we did not end up trying out the cleaver. Oh well. <laughs> GG. Alright gamers, we are back for another game of Draven to Diamond. This game playing Draven Brand. And the Zeri Lulu. So given the enemy comp is going to be really squishy. I think this is a game where we can try out the semi-tank driven build. What we're probably going to try is... Shot for us first item into the standard Revenous Hydra second. And then we're going to do Black Cleaver. Which I'm not even sure if it's even worth it. Uh, when you have... Um, Already somewhere CDR right anyway, but we can try it. And then we do Styrix, final item. What is Lulu trading with me for? They should be avoiding trades when they are level 1 against the 2x Draven who is level 2. In fact, screw the level 2, they just do not want to trade against the 2x Draven like this. Not without at least 2 abilities. Because if you notice, I mean, Draven's level 2 basically gives him W, which is not like too much DPS early on. Basically all it is, is a tool to help him land his axes on the opponents more easily. But as soon as he actually has the axes, he has all the tools he actually needs to fight. Oh, didn't mean to take a third shot, my bad. She might be dead to that. She is. Nice one. That was a bit cocky. Uh, Zeri should have definitely healed, though. So I think taking one auto attack trade against Draven in a situation where she's using the shield to block the damage is absolutely fine. I would flash in there to kill her, by the way, if she didn't have heal. But you can only do one auto attack trades there. Nice. Let's go, Brand. Well played. Uh, we can leave the wave here. I think we probably should. 
We know where Rel is, but I don't really need to shove that in. Doesn't really get me much, so. Don't want to risk handing Lulu a freeze. Yeah, I would say if Lulu walks up to me and auto attacks me and shields me to like block the damage from the one axe, so long as the trade remains at the, just those like that exchange of one auto each, that's fine for her. It's probably I don't know maybe an even trade, which is always worth to do as a support taking even trades against the enemy ADC because it's actually valuable for the enemy ADC to be low, whereas it's not that valuable for Lulu to be low because she's never gonna die so long as she plays smart, right? But obviously that wasn't played smart. Hmm, I think he's dead here, maybe. Ah, oh, I used the next early, my bad. An enemy has been slain. Okay, we got tech from here. Okay, Brand lives. Uh, Zeri is probably gonna have her E very soon, by the way. She obviously gets reduction from her... Autos? Okay, I guess not then. Nice one. Cool. Actually, dropped an axe there as well. My bad. One just ran out, and then uh, I think I did one auto with an axe and immediately dropped it somehow. Don't know what happened there. I suppose I could arguably just do Alacrity, by the way, if I'm doing Bloodline. Uh, sorry, instead of Bloodline, if I'm going to be doing Vamps up the Rush anyway. Definitely reduces the incentive to run Bloodline, although Bloodline would still scale better. Any damage I take, I don't care about, because look how easily I sustain it. Ah, but I missed a cannon, my bad. Dead. I don't know why I bothered cleansing, because sure, it's really nice for reducing the ignite damage, but am I really afraid of dying to Lulu here? Not really. Thank you, Brent, for not stealing the kill. Drop the next again, my bad. And I'll let that one run out. We can leave this wave. Okay, but I guess we won't. If he could use the Z as well on the wave, that would be fantastic. Eh, it doesn't matter, I guess. Might have been able to just kill the wave with my E though. I need to obviously not aggro for a tier. That's fine. Uh, she actually came closer to killing me than I would have expected, but I was obviously not expecting to die to Rel damage there. She doesn't do too much damage. If she was support, then maybe she would have had Ignite, and maybe that would have killed, but obviously she's not support. I think they pretty much have to just crash this and play some vision and get the wave to reset, by the way, because the way they are playing this is going to leave me with a potential freeze. I think I'm... I think I probably have a big enough lead, especially considering I've got Brand, who's got really good harass as well, where I can just easily enter the lane and start, like, thinning this out and just trading against Zeri, forcing her off the wave. I only have one axe right now, Oof, so it's a bit of a risk to take this fight. We'll pay off though, nice one. Alright, we're not gonna freeze then. Now we can just look to maybe dive Zeri instead. Ooh. I did drop an axe, I thought I caught them both. Could've used my W there to make absolutely sure I missed, or dodged the Zeri W, but it worked out. Using my Sheen there to one shot that Coster. Don't need to do it for the other two, because they're not full HP. Brand, where are you? Oh, wait, I thought it was in that brush, but no, it's just a ward. Okay, nice. Oof. Damn, that's a shame. Okay, we got the plating. This wave will be 
pushing towards us. It's very good. This is also going to be hard for Zeri to try and crush. Is, is this Lula actually just coming to cut some recall? No, she isn't. Okay, she should have been. There was a small chance she would die, but I only had one X, so... I, I wouldn't really be worried in her shoes about the potential of her actually dying there. Yeah, because this was so far on her side of the map, even if she tried to crash it, like I said before, was her best choice. This time she didn't even have the chance to try and do that, because previously it was in like the middle of the wave. And this time it was so far on their side of the wave that it was going to lead to the exact same scenario as just happened. Even if she tried to do the right thing, right? There was just no good move for her there. But, I mean, she's she seems to be AFK, so it doesn't matter. But if she hadn't been AFK, that, those were her options. She, she could only really, like, try and crash and fail. Or just slow push again and just basically the same thing happens. We just all in her and kill her. Even against her massive wave just because you have that big a lead. Well, if she's going to be AFK, we may as well push. We can get turret platings. I don't think I kill a melee with two shots, right? No, I need a trapper's proc. Come on. Blocked around the minion. Okay, Rella's top side as well, by the way. Ah, didn't go to me, sadly. Well, so we're we potentially getting ganked by. I don't think there's anybody, right? No, it's just Mazahar being afraid that I'm going to die to his laner. Which I might. I can't promise that I won't. But it seems unlikely. Oh, come on. Ah, I should have just flashed for it. Oh, well. Mm, maybe it's for the best that I don't, though. I do have a big shot down and I would risk dying to the turret. Definitely think I could avoid it, but... Okay, but now it's just... Oh, come on. No, I was going to say now it's completely risk-free, but that's unreal. Holy shit, my bad. It must have dropped both axes there. Fuck. My bad. Lost Auto should have killed him if I caught at least one of them. Fuck me, that was unlucky timing. If I had just said, screw catching this one axe, I'm just going to flash in him as soon as he appeared on my screen, I would have killed him. But instead I was like, oh, I can flash in him. I'm just going to catch this axe first. And that's what gave time for Lulu to fucking walk up and shield him. God, that's annoying. Like, as soon as he walked into my screen, I already said, I was already thinking in my head, oh, I'm gonna flash on him. But I just wanted to catch that axe first, and look at what ended up happening. Did I even catch it, by the way? No, I, I did, I did. I'm fucking amazed he actually survived that, though. Holy shit. Oh, I'm already here in the lane. Whoops. Oh, well. Like I said, I mean, there's always the risk I'm going to die to his laner there, right? But just because this, there's a chance it might happen doesn't mean that I'm going to, like, uh, don't, like, not do what I think is the right call just because there's a chance it might backfire and somebody else might be annoyed by that. Obviously, right now, though, I'm just going to concede the freeze until I'm more confident that I can safely walk up. UNA is back mid. Should be fine now. Mm. If I had any passive stacks, that would have executed. Oh, well. Nice beta there. Didn't get to do much with it, but we got some damage. I was never going to be able to hit her with that auto, by the way. Like, I was always going to take a turret shot for free, but I was hoping that she would get baited into thinking that that meant she could CC under turret, was I was never going to extend that hard. Alright, now she's dead. Right? Ah, oh, the brand again. Oh well. Nice one. 
But I managed to hit her first, so I didn't have to drop aggro. Cool. Where's Yone? Okay, he's stuck under a turret. I could actually just test the Black Cleaver straight up here, by the way. I suppose we'll try that. Uh, never mind. Okay, GG. Alright, gamers, we are back for another game of Driven to Diamond. This game playing Draven Bard into Ezreal Swain. So we're going to be running Cleanse once again. Good for the Nocturne, good for the Ezreal... No, not for the Ezreal. Nothing about the Ezreal. Good for the Swain E, I guess. It doesn't really even matter against Swain E. I'm not actually sure. It is good against the RE evil. And thankfully, they actually have Exhaust in the lane. So that's something we can use Cleanse on. In fact, in high low, Draven pretty much runs cleanse every single game just to remove exhaust. The only reason I wouldn't do it just for that reason in low elo is because people typically don't run exhaust as much into Draven. So you can't be sure that they're going to have exhaust if exhaust is the only thing you could cleanse in lane. Ezreal is not really, like, moving into positions where I can punish him, I would say. The Swain just finally did something where I can punish. God bless, because I can super easily dodge those Swainies with my W. But now I would try and punish him, but I'm also just too busy lost hitting all three of these minions. They were full mana still, so I'm going to level my E. I'm going to try and crash a wave, since we obviously can't really um, zone Ezreal from farm at any point. The next best thing to do is try and get him to miss farm with a turret, I guess. I'm not sure we could really satisfyingly crash this wave, though. Bro, oof, I have to use my Q, Q there to reset my axe, because my auto just wouldn't go off on the minion for some reason. Oh my god, my bad. I think I need to flash just to play it safe. Oh, and I got minion blocked again. That's unreal. What a bad sequence of events, man. Yeah, funnily enough, so the longer range the Swainies are, the harder they actually are to dodge. If I'm, like, walking up the Swain to auto-attack him and then he throws a Z, then I can super easily dodge that because I'm already inside his auto-attack range. But if I'm walking up to minion a mile away from Swain and Swain is using his Z to try and catch me out as I'm going for the lost head, that is when it's most easy for Swain to actually hit me with a Z. I think I need to try and get this loss out with my E. On the cannon. It's not looking like it's gonna die, actually. We're gonna ignore the melee and just go straight for the cannon. Nice one. Did I drop an axe? I did somehow, no but. This would be great if I wasn't already so low, unfortunately. Maybe Ezreal is overstepped here, though? Oh, you're kidding me. I died that. My bad. Bard should be able to kill Ezreal, though. Ooh, but of course, Ezreal also has cleanse. And the Bard Q got eaten by a minion. Ah, uh, damn, that's rough. Uh, fuck, man. I was gonna do Longsword, then I realized I couldn't afford it, so I was gonna do Boots. Couldn't find Boots, because of course they go here, not here. Oh well. 
Okay, that sucks. There was actually nothing for me to even use cleanse or flash on there. I guess I could have technically flashed a Azure key. I think it came out of the brush, so I couldn't see it properly though. Yeah, the lane has been a bit rough so far. Because we've had no form of engage at all for the enemy bot lane. And Ezreal doesn't really like walk up and just tank my autos, which is what a worse player would do. But clearly it's better than that. So I basically have to rely on engages and we have Bard for engage, which is... Well, it just means we're fucked if we're relying on Bard for engage of all champions. At level 3. At least until level 6. And even then, Ezreal is not the easiest champion to engage on, especially with cleanse. So it would be fine if you had just like an enchanter like Lulu, but the Swain pressure has been pretty crazy. We dodged, like we dodged most of his engages, most of his ease, but then the moment he hits one, I mean, that's all it takes to get an advantage against us. Well, I don't really have many uh, opportunities to get an advantage myself. Let's hope they start messing up though. Just because they played the lane well so far doesn't mean they'll not mess up at some point. Not even that hits me. I got a big wave here though, so I don't think they should have done that. Oh, Bard. Oh, that's so sad, man. Okay. Oh. That was going to be my passive. Can I shout? Not that it's a huge one. Oh, I still got it. Holy shit. Okay. That is unreal. <laughs> I can't believe that I actually got him. Okay, 257 gold. Not bad. Not bad. I'm just going to base here. This splitting is pretty tanky. Okay, cool. We finally got into a long, drawn-out fight. Not just a quick trade where they... Do a ton of damage on me and then walk away. It helps, of course, they've got so much sustain now and also a lot more extended damage than I had before as well. Can get this and also the Sheen. Nah, I don't even need a pink against Nocturne. I'll get one potion just for the sake of getting something, I guess. So that, honestly, I could easily just not buy any consumables there, though. Ooh, this could be very bad. Ooh, 150 gold shutdown on the Ezreal as well. That is so tragic that Bard took that for no reason. I knew he might try and do it as well, so I tried to auto E, but I just couldn't do E fast enough to land after my auto without cancelling my auto. To sneak it in before the Bard auto. I shouldn't have put that. My goal here is to preserve as much HP as I can since I'm 1v2 for a while. If I lose too much HP here, then I'm no longer going to be healthy enough to 2v2 by the time Bard gets into lane. My sole goal here is to make sure that while I'm 1v2, I'm not fucking up the future 2v2 as well by losing too much HP. That means potentially having to give up some farm. Ah, my bad. Dropped an axe there. Two axes, technically. Okay, so Israel has no E. Should fuck Israel actually. Bard. I don't. Did I drop? I maybe dropped one X there. Nice, huge. So the main thing that went great for us there was just how like deep into our side of the lane the enemy bot lane was. Ezreal usually would not get punished so hard for using a Z if he was like here, for example. I would still probably want to trade overall with if he uses Z that aggressively when I've already got the lead now. But because he did, he happened to do that. Um, actually, initially I wouldn't have even been able to hit him at all. Actually, I think with the way that trade actually happened, now that I recall, but. With them being so far on our side of the lane, it's, we just have so much room to chase them down. If they don't win extended fights, then they do not want to be wasting their escapes. Because their escape is the way they avoid those extended fights in the first place. Ezreal just needs to be playing you know, to his advantage, which he, for him is range in this lane. But the moment that he uses his E, when I'm not even low, by the way. If, me, if I was low, he could get away with that. But when I'm full HP, I can afford to tank a few skill shots as I run them down and close the gap. And then I know Ezreal has no escape and I can just kill him because I have more sustained damage. 
The moment that your Wiss is engaged, his range is like no longer a big enough advantage. Because I can just run him down. You know, it's still an advantage that he has over me, but it stops being enough. It's only enough of an advantage to make this lane bearable if he's combining that with having an escape. I'm sure this isn't towards me, so I can walk forwards and ward. Okay, I guess I was real based at some point. Ah, stepped into that box and I didn't need to. Could have caught the axe without it. See, when I'm running right into him, I just have so much time to dodge the Sweeney when it's returning into me. Okay. Oh god, there's Nari here. What the hell? I didn't see that coming. My bad. She must have TP'd. Okay, I got one kill. Huge. And I got a big cash out. That is so huge that I got the kill before dying. Otherwise, I would have lost 75% of the stacks and gotten way less gold out of it. Yeah, she either TP'd or just... No, she TP'd. <laughs> if you look at where she starts the clip at, that was a TP for sure. Fair enough. That was a hard to catch, I guess. Won't give myself too hard a time about that one. I did see... I th was it Nocturne coming in through the lane? But I was fairly confident that I could just stomp the enemy bot lane so hard before Nocturne arrives in the lane, especially given that Nocturne didn't have ult. That by the time Nocturne arrives, their, their bot lane is either dead or just so low that they can't fight anymore. So that would be fine. It's purely the RE flank that screwed us over there. Man, my team is having a rough time, though. Actually, I should have just done double longsword instead of pickaxe. If I could give myself the option to do black cleaver again. Second item. In case I wouldn't be able to afford it. Ooh, that's... Okay, decent. Would have let the kill if it didn't have cleanse. Or, well, potentially could have flashed, but that was about it. But really, man, like, holy crap. I don't want to waste 35 mana every time I'm getting minion blocked. Hmm. Don't have a word to place behind me, so I'm hoping I'm not getting flanked by Ari right now. In general, we can't, we got to be careful here. As f Did Nocturne recently ult? I don't think so. I think Nocturne ult should either be up or about to be up. So, ugh, this is the kind of thing I need to avoid. I can't really try and... I've, I can't try and get into those extended fights that I've been looking for. Oof. Oh man, that should have been a kill really. Ooh, we need to help here. Okay. Ooh. That is awkward. Oh, damn. Maybe I can... Yeah, I should go through. Ooh, Briar. Oh no! Nah, I can't get him. Fuck, that sucks. Oh no, no, I'm dead. I don't have time to get to a wall and flush. To be honest, I did actually not notice the hard tunnel until it was too late. I don't know, did he use that at the time when I could have followed? I probably could have. Yeah, actually I could have. I absolutely did not notice that. My bad. My um, awareness of the bar portal there was non-existent. Yeah, I don't know if the Bard ult was really the best move there. It did definitely make the Briar ult miss. This could be good. Uh, Nocturne is not going to overstay. Hmm. Annoying freeze. I might just ult for the cannon. I think it's worth it. Oh, come on. Okay, I got it. It almost dodged my ult. How annoying would that have been? 
Ooh, the awkward thing about this wave state as well is that Nocturne could potentially already have ult again. If it's not up now, it's going to be up very, very soon. So I'm going to shove this wave real fast, and we're not going to pressure the turret. Not until I have way more information, at least. Okay. It's a shame golems aren't up, because it would be the perfect time to do golems. This could, I, Since we have such a long window of not being able to do anything, there's actually a time when I would say it's worth rotating mid. But there's not much to do mid, so... We can walk over there and see if a gank happens, and we might be able to counter gank. But since Ari is obviously just such an easy escaping champion, I'm, I'm not gonna, like, lose a wave bot lane just to force the Ari ult. I don't think that's worth it. Especially when there's not even any guarantee that I'll force the Ari ult. But if I if it was, like, a flip of actually killing Ari, I would say that's worth it. And it's, it's, it's especially worth it to just walk up there while I've got literally nothing better to do anyway. Because we can just see, like, is Nocturne gonna gank? Is fucking Mordekaiser gonna gank? Is Swain gonna gank? Is something going to happen there, and I just happen to be there right place, right time, just because I knew that I had nothing to do with bot lane anyway. I can also just shove this and, I guess, base for... This might be for us. No, I guess not. Base for Ravenous Hydra. Ooh, or should I... Try and kill Ari, actually. Uh oh. Wow. Okay, this is looking promising. Got him. 160 extra gold for me. I don't know if I previously had the bounty hunter or treasure hunter from Ari, but I do have it now. Okay, well, we can be pretty confident Nocturne doesn't have ult right now. There was always the chance Swain happened to be in the brush trying to cheese me there. I, Since I had two axes there and cleanse up, I was actually just taking the risk and was confident I could just win. We do see a mid now, though. And now my utmost priority is just to base for Ravenous Hydra. Even, even if I'm much stronger than Ezreal right now and I can try and abuse him. Realistically, there's not too much that I can do against him. He is Ezreal. He's super safe. Alright, now we're going to go for Black Cleaver. If this is too much CDR, by the way, or, like, I don't really find much value in all the extra haste. But I do decide that the cleaver itself is actually really nice, by the way. Then what I can do is I can just hold on to that vamp scepter all the way until third item and build black cleaver second. That is also an option. And some of the games, it wouldn't even make a difference because we build call fields into run the side of black cleaver anyway. And then a lot of the time, we've just based on enough gold to do either one of them. Didn't do this in time. Oh well. So there's no E, so I can just walk up and hit him. Oof, nice try. Swain should be in a better spot. Oh. There's real no cleanse. Okay, that went pretty well. For a second there, I thought I misclicked my own cleanse when I heard cleanse. I think I can just barely pick up this red buff, thanks to this portal. I might be wrong though. No, I think I get it for sure. Look at this. I got five seconds, by the way. The timer is literally when... It, it lasts for one minute, so the when it disappears is literally when this hits zero. Or potentially at 59. I can't remember exactly. Literally on any other map, I don't think I would have had that red buff. Nice. Wow, I got so much haste right now, by the way. Do 
Even if the haste is a bit overkill, at the very least it means I'm not like quite so pressured to hit Q exactly when it comes up if I want to maintain axes without minions. Yeah, I would base for Cleaver right now, but I, I got to expect the fight to be happening. Even if this didn't happen right now, like the Drake is up. That is real nice. What's this? Come on. Nice one. Yeah, I kind of wasted my cleanse there, to be honest. I may as well... Well, I don't know. I guess it was fine to cleanse there. Nah, I, cu I could auto-attack Ari anyway. I need to stay away from the Mordecai as well, for now. As long as I could auto-attack, which I can during the Everfrost, then the I don't think there was actually much point in me cleansing. I should have only cleansed the farm. We should get the Drake. Could have just based her, honestly. If we weren't going to get the Drake or the turret. Maybe that's just hindsight, though. I can't remember if I could have expected to get the turret or not. Okay, we're getting it now, though. That's nice. Oh, she's going for it again. How does she have ult again already? That's an auto there. That could have been a disaster. Might still be. Oh, it was, it was a disaster. Damn it. Lost too much damage for that. Well, she, it lost too much HP, I mean. Technically, I lost damage as well. Damn, that was a lot of damage from Ori. If I'd managed to juke the Q, I think I might have been fine and managed to kill her as well. Oh well. Uh, we might want to do... Yeah, we absolutely want to do Merc Treads. Mordekaiser's majority magic damage, Ari's majority magic, Swain is majority magic. By the way, I think Bard is actually really bad into Swain, because Swain has huge synergy with Zhonya's, and Bard ult is basically just the Zhonya's for Swain. The entire time that Swain is in his, in the Bard ult, he's dealing damage and healing. It, com it can completely turn a fight around for him. Just having that extra, those extra seconds of dealing damage and healing with his ult. Alright, Zareth isn't going bot, so we will go bot. Sorry, still love is up on me. I don't like that. Oh my god, we got 91 ability haste on Draven. That feels obscene. This champion does not need that much ability haste. Nocturne probably has ult. I definitely don't want to ever extend here. I don't want to be pathing away from Mario already in case Nocturne does try and ult. I only stayed to push that wave because he seemed to be distracted based on what I could see on the map. Wait, hold up. Wait, why did I do another Caulfield? Perfection. I got that. Wait, what? When when did I do that? What? Why why did I do that? I don't need another Caulfield. Oh god. Terrible. Ah, I didn't notice I was Trump. Or was it Don't tell me that was the Nocturne fear. Oh, holy crap. I could have cleansed that. Oh, that Okay, yeah, it was the charm. I didn't even fucking see it. My bad. I guess because she was in, like, melee... Yeah, she was in melee range of me, so I never actually saw the charm itself. And I was in my ultimate when I got hit by the CC, so I didn't see that I got CC'd, because I was self-CC'd anyway. That fucking sucks. Oh, well. This timing for when we were all dead. Uh, knocked an ult. is a thing. <laughs> yeah, let's sell this, I guess. Uh, what do we want? Maybe I don't need to sell it yet, so I'm probably going to be doing Steric's Gauge here. By the way, I want to say, mm, I'm like 70% sure that I could carry this game if I went the regular build. We, we will see if this build helps me carry or not.
I've got pain to serve. It's definitely gonna be nice though having Sterix Gauge on top of the Triforce, on top of the Black Cleaver. To survive those fucking uh dives. Like that was that already that Black Cleaver was already huge value in the fight, I think. And if I'd played it perfectly, I think it might have been enough to carry the fight. Hmm. Really? That's crazy. Doesn't get better than this. Can't catch that axe. Might just be dead here. Fuck me. No, I was overextended there. My bad. I need the base. Somebody needs to deal with this Mordekaiser. I'll just walk into base. This way I can also preserve my axes, I guess. In case I need the mace up. Flash. Bro. Oh, you're kidding me. He's got that back up. Ooh, no! He just killed me, I think. Yeah, he just killed me. Like, I could have killed that Nocturne before the fear went off. Well, that blows. Because I, I, I knew as soon as he hit me with his ultimate, he's just letting the Nocturne ult... Uh, sorry, fear channel. So I'm going to be insta-CC'd the moment I come out of the... Uh, Bartolt anyway, even if they didn't time their CC, their other CC perfectly as well, which they did. That completely fucked me over there. I I wouldn't have carried that fight regardless of my items, honestly. That uh, was a bit unfortunate. Oh well. GG. Hmm. That was one of the dumbest level 1 plays I've ever seen from anybody at all. Oh, I can show you guys what happened there. Like, we were not really invading, right? We were just like, you know, just chilling. Fresh walks in really slowly, just walks into the middle of the jungle, presses ass. Walks forwards, presses ass again. Walks a bit more forwards, presses ass again. Decides he wants to ward here, but at this point, he's given the enemies like five seconds to realize he's in their jungle. Like, what the hell? Oh, well. We got the kill. Kaisa, very unfortunate for us. Okay, she didn't get to spend her gold yet though, so that's good. Oh. better. Could have gone worse. Could have somehow ended up in fresh dying again. Okay, this should be a kill, right? Nice one. I haven't got to kill myself. Okay, got a double. We should be able to kill Kaiser here too. Come on. Fuck it, let's not uh, take any risks there, right? Just flash forwards, guarantee the kill. Oh, and what an absolute disaster for a wave state for her. These dis lost hits are disastrous for me, but whatever. I think because we have such a big wave here, I can't afford to go for the plating, which usually I think would take too long to die. Maybe I'm wrong and it still takes too long to die. But when we've got like 20 CS hitting the turret, it definitely dies a lot faster than you would otherwise expect. Uh, Swain probably doesn't have W, but just in case, I'm not going to base in the most obvious brush. He might still cancel my base, which is super annoying. Yeah, he's definitely going to do that. He did have his W, and he did use it in the right brush. To be fair, they might have had vision from the fight, so that makes sense. 
Anyway, they can try and slow push, which is realistically the best choice they have since they can't crash the way from here. But they probably shouldn't be able to deny too much CS there. Just because uh, my wave is so close to their turret, I imagine one or two of my melees went under turret already. Oh, actually, I could I have done Longsword and Sheen? I could have, yeah. Probably would have been better. Oh, well. Yeah. Diego just way over chased there. At a certain point, he just gotta realize I can kite you too hard. That was exactly the kind of situation I want to be in as Draven. Just cutting backwards with just one guy with no abilities or CC available, no burst, no gap closers left. Just walking at me mindlessly. While I have my con my double axes up and my constant W resets. Place a ward. Let's admire me for a bit. You can absolutely fight if he lands a hook. Ooh, did I miss an axe? I did. Fuck. Oh well. I'll drop another one. Just to get that easy disengage. <clears throat> I don't know if we really needed to disengage, but at, at least as soon as Thresh disengages from there, I probably shouldn't continue 1v2 into their wave as well. Ooh, this could be a kill. No, never mind. Apparently she has that. I don't think I needed to run cleanse this game, by the way. I kind of just didn't look at their comp. Could have run exhaust here. All I can really cleanse in this lane is ignite. If that's the only thing you can cleanse in the lane, then for sure in lane it's not that good. I mean, I cleansed the Viego W, to be fair, it might have actually saved the gank for me during the Viego W. Uh, the gank by cleansing the Viego W. Maybe nothing else would have performed as good there, but certainly very niche this game. I mean, surely Exhaust would have had a similar outcome, right? Okay, at least it's on Drake. It's kind of covering us. Oh no. Okay, I got the shield. Nice one. We drop full next there just to tactfully continue walking forwards. Cause then you could get a kill on Swain there with an, a second auto instead of focusing on catching my axe. Already had all the axes I needed. <coughs> If can just hit her with anything at all. I can just try and hit her with ult as well here. Oh, okay. Yeah, he could have just played her. That was an easy kill. It's a bit of a risk. How did that hit? Oh, hang on. Oh, I'm so screwed here. Actually, I could have taken the lantern. True, my bad. You're kidding me. Yeah, I could have taken the lantern, my bad. But what the fuck, man? Oh, that would have been at least so much CS tonight if I could just kill her there. Oh well. <laughs> could go for Phantom Dancer. Tempting. I always knew this was going to be a risk, but I didn't um, account for Viego showing up. I cleansed also just because I expected Swain, if he was taking that trade, to probably have Ignite up, which he, I guess, didn't, or we, he would have used it. But I wanted as fast a cleanse as possible on the Ignite to remove as much damage as possible. Don't be 
showers. Seems to be blood everywhere I go. Ooh. Mm. If only there was um CS so already under turret so it could actually follow that hook. Kinda fucked this up already, my butt. And to just auto attack her. Got her. If you cannot win an extended fight against Raven, do not even bother, because I'm gonna extend that as hard as I can using my E. Keep her in the fight as long as possible. Okay, he's fine. Oh shit. I fucked up. My bad. Oh, Thresh, you don't have to die as well, though. No. Our bad. Ah, oh, we're bad. Mostly mine, though. What went wrong there? Because my memory is so short. Oh, I got pulled out of my fucking axis. Yeah, that'll do it. Doesn't get better than this. Oh, okay, you know what? I never would have expected that E to hit me. Now I see how the hell I... Misplayed there. It's because I, like, in my mind, that, that was not even a misplay I could make. <laughs> I had fully d counted out that Swainy is having missed. Like, here, I already thought, yep, that was the Swainy. Oh, that sucks. Oh, hello. Oh, I walked right past the wave. What the hell? That must have been, like, the very bottom of the Swainy range, I guess. I'm definitely not used to getting rooted at that point. out and I walk forwards. Can use my W too early there, but oh come on. Okay nice. I actually almost had Vigo as well. I tried to flush on him to kill him is the exact moment that got rooted by Swain as well. That was a terrible gank to go for though. He lost all of his HP before his bolt link could actually follow up. It would be per it would be ideal if they could initiate ganks with Swainy landing. The moment that like Swain has already missed a Z and you still go for the gank anyway, it is a bit yikes. At the very least, you would like Swain E to be up. So maybe there's a chance he will hit it in future. But I mean, realistically, the gank needs to start with Swainy if 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 Viego is going to be that squishy because he's using Kraken Slayer over the tankier choices. I don't think I lose this necessarily. It's a bit risky to try, but cleansing just in case he has ignite. Realistically, I could just wait and see if he's gonna ignite me or not. But uh, in the sheer panic of the moment, I'm like, "Fuck! I might not notice. I gotta cleanse it just in case." Okay, that was definitely risky with uh, the fact that I had a shutdown and so much unspent gold in particular. I didn't need to fight there. I was not fighting up my full power, but I was still confident that I did have that in the bag. Maybe I was right. I did win. Alright, well, we can test the Black Labor second this time. And, in fact, now that we have um, enough for... 
uh, infinite queue up time, enough ability haste. We don't need to do Romanus Hydra anymore. We could still, like I said, it's probably still fine. Um, but we could either go for Shield Ball or Bloodthirster instead, which, to be honest, I think would be the best choice. I think the only point in going Ravenous Hydra is to get to that uh, ability haste breakpoint where you get infinite queue up time. Uh, or what we could do, I don't like this option as much, but it is an option, is we can just sit on the Vamp Scepter for even longer and just go for a, a completely unrelated third item. Like, um, what was the item? Steric Gauge. So we can test that sooner. Test Tank Draven sooner. Nice one. Oh, um, oh no, no, okay. So, uh, Thresh would have given me the cannon if I missed that. That's fine. I can tell he has Tobbies. I can literally just detect Tobbies against people out attack as Draven. Now at this point I just hit somebody and I'm like, that damage doesn't look right. Something's off here. Yeah, I doubt... So, I would say that probably this build order that we've done so far is perfectly fine. Especially because in these games where I just base on enough for uh, Black Cleaver alongside Ravenous Hydra, whichever I prefer, then there's, like, no downside to doing this. But I would say... I reckon that probably, even if that's not the case, it is probably okay to keep on delaying your lifestyle item at least a little bit further until you, you're at three items. But, uh... I'm more hesitant to say that it's still worth to keep on delaying vamps up there. Purely the only reason why I want to do this and actually just go for the Sterex Rush is purely because I want to get around to testing that Sterex Rush. Up until this point, I would say this build is fine. And, you know, as, as if we're accepting Black Cleaver German is fine. I'm not sure I'm at that point yet. But, um... Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily keep on recommending to delay your lifestyle item. If you already have vamps up there. To be fair, I think most people obviously don't rush for Scepter like I do. So they wouldn't necessarily have to build Lifesteal Third here. But the most common build when they do this Tank Draven build is they just do Triforce into Black Cleaver into Sterex with no Lifesteal. But obviously because I already rushed Vamp Scepter, it just makes a whole lot more sense to me. Even if I'm doing a Tank Draven build, to continue to build a Lifesteal item, third item. Because I'm already like a third way there. A third of the way, I mean. Plus I'm running out of item slots if I don't go a lifestyle item. I can only get one component towards my Sterex if I do Sterex. But like I said, I'm doing it anyway. Oh, fuck. For the sake of trying it out. Oh. Oh. Okay, nice. Did he just fail his ult? Because I thought I failed my ult. Because he was going to ult over the wall. But then I'm pretty sure his ult went off. But he just didn't go through the wall. So I think he missed it. I don't think it can be interrupted. Pretty sure I could ignite it there. God, this guy takes no damage, by the way. Ah, oh, fuck me. My bad. So, did I, did he take no damage because he's got Tobbies and he's Swain? Or did he take no damage because I went Black Cleaver second? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, surely Black Cleaver is not less damage than Romulus Hydra, though, is the thing. It could also just be an issue of I was fucking fighting on 2,600 gold. Of course, I'm not going to do damage. But, I mean, I'm still one whole item over Swain. I would have expected to go on faster. 
Hmm. I think it's just the thubbies. I'm not used to seeing thubbies on Swain. Definitely expected them to die a lot faster than that. We'll just, uh, save until... Sterex won't buy anything. Won't buy boots. Yeah, I literally just need this one wave and then I can base for Sterex. Did I get that cannon? I truly hope I did. Oh my god, I didn't because I don't have the gold. <laughs> Fuck. That's enough. And some harassment to... Nar. Okay, so we've got 3000 HP at level 11. That's gonna continue getting even higher. I'm also running, by the way, HP in my runes instead of armor, since... Their bot lane is fairly mixed damage. Even Kaiser herself is mixed damage. Already does a lot of magic damage. And then she has a pure AP support alongside her. As well as a pure AP mid laner. So I was always going to be taking a lot of magic damage in the lane. So it didn't make sense to me to run armor. So I took the HP instead. Because so, it also wouldn't make sense to run Amar against an ADC. Oh, we can do Baron here. They are right. Enemy team does not seem like they are prepared for this. I uh, dropped Maxis, my butt. Something need killing. I can try and gank this echo. Never mind, he's out of vision and he's not overextending. Visibly anyway. Oh, didn't mean to take that. Oh, I definitely missed the damage of going crit. How much AD am I getting from this? 49. Not too bad then. Not too bad. Oh my god. Got... No, I don't got Kai'Sa. What? Okay, now I got Kai'Sa. Jesus. You definitely do more damage building crit, that is for sure. To be honest, I'm thinking this build is overrated as shit. No way this is worth it. Like the I get so much lifesteal from going lifesteal anyway. If I wanted a defensive item, I could just go shield bow. Oh well, uh, that's all the time we had for it today. Let me know your thoughts on the Tank Draven build, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later gamers.